Welcome back to the Michael Geeky Podcast. Tonight, we're thrilled to sit down with a standout member of my Discord community, an experienced and talented mushroom cultivator known as Stinkyfoot. If you spend any time on the server, you've probably seen Stinkyfoot in action, always ready to lend a hand and guide new growers on their journey. In this episode, we dive into what makes a cultivator exceptional, mentorship, valuing your craft, and the relentless pursuit of excellence. But growing mushrooms is just the beginning. Stinkyfoot shares why the ultimate goal is integration and how it can transform not just your mushroom cultivation practice, but your life. So grab your agar plates and join us for an inspiring conversation with one of the Myco community's most dedicated mentors, my friend and yours, Stinkyfoot. Yo, welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, where we explore the fascinating world of mushrooms and the people who love them. From expert cultivators to passionate foragers, we bring you deep conversations, cutting edge insights, and everything mycology. Whether you're a seasoned mycophile or just curious, we invite you to geek out with us on the wonders of fungi and join the mushroom movement. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, a podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Mike Geeky, and we got a great show for you tonight. We're going to sit down with my buddy, Stinky Foot, or as we like to call him in the server, Stanky Foot. Uh, he's a cool guy. He's a lot of fun. Uh, he's really nice, really helpful. Uh, it's been great to get to know him over the years, and uh, we've been working real hard to get him on the show, and I finally, finally did it. So I'm very excited. Uh, before we get into that, you know, shout out to Stealthy Spores. Uh, promo code Geeky gets you 10% off uh, stuff over there. Fun stuff. Um, that game is a lot of fun. I've been playing off and on with my kids. I've been playing it with uh, some some Myco friends uh, like Happy Hyphae. And uh, yeah, having a good time. We played it at the Ohio Mushroom Festival. Definitely had a had a little vibe going on over there at the, the Myco Trex tent. It was a good time. So check that out. Stealthy Sports Card Decks, uh, they make good Christmas presents for your Myco friends. Uh, just saying. Also, um, you know, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to do this because it's about, we're getting about that time, Christmas time, Black Friday, all that good stuff. People start thinking about buying Christmas presents. Um, if you got a friend who who loves Myco, if you love Myco and you're just getting into it and you're looking to get some uh, some treats and some toys for your mycology journey, um, I still make these guys, the, these sterilizers. Um, this right here, it looks pretty shiny. This is literally the second one I ever made. Um, still works. Never had a problem with it. I take care of it, you know. Uh, I think I've made not quite 900 of them at this point, and uh, I've had to repair three. So uh, batting average looking real good. We put a MOSFET in there, um, try to protect all the components, take a lot of time to make it look nice, make it work great, make it very safe. Um, anyway, that's on my Etsy store. If you're interested in grabbing one of those, uh, man, if I ever had enough free time, I'm trying to get my website together. Uh, I got that Mycotrex site together. That took a lot of work, but I figured a lot of things out. Hopefully I'll, I'll be getting the Myco Geeky site up here shortly. Give you guys another opportunity to, uh, purchase directly from me instead of going through Etsy. Etsy's great, you know, uh, objective reviews. I got five star reviews on there that, that, that means that's honestly me taking care of people. So anyway, uh, uh, enough about the sterilizer, enough about stealthy spores, love my discord, been spending a little bit more time in there lately. Uh, finally, you know, the, <laughs> the busy season is over the festival season, uh, the, the traveling season that's, that's winding down. I'm raking leaves. I, I'm, I'm raking leaves. I got a lot of oak trees in the yard, got a lot of leaves to rake. So we're shifting gears, getting ready for the winter up here in Northeast Ohio. Anyway, uh, really excited to uh, focus back on some grows. Uh, Going to focus on some DNA sequencing. Um, just started uh, volunteering for Fundus, doing some sequence validation for them. I'm learning a lot. Shout out to Heart Singer. That guy is amazing. Um, dedicated, loyal, uh, happy Hyphae and I were were hopping in the the, the ID room at NAMA. Uh, almost everybody was gone. Except in the back, you got Heart Singer do, doing a, a nanopore run. And I'm just like, this is what dedication looks like. This this guy cares. He loves mushrooms. It's really cool to be around those kind of people. And it's even better to be able to help those people out. So shout out to him and all the people that work on that validation crew. 
like my buddy Scott Astuni, like my friend Jessica Williams. They also have been uh, really great helping me out, teaching me a few things, uh, help me, uh, you know, be able to contribute, be able to give back. So what else do we got going on? I don't know. It's getting to, uh, getting to be the holiday season, man. You know, gears are shifting and uh, I, I'm excited to be inside a little bit more, do some more projects. Um, the, the, like I said, the DNA sequencing, um, growing a lot more mushrooms, having a good time, man, Facebook knocked me out. Uh, I had a Psilocybe Policulosa post. I didn't eat them. I'm not selling them. I just thought it was cool to find some Psilocybe up in Washington and, uh, the old Facebook algorithm. It doesn't like that. Doesn't want you to find and look at mushrooms. So anyway, uh, can't, can't comment or what I, what is it? I can't. I can't post in groups for, for a couple weeks. I can't do this. I can't do, you know, it's so bizarre. Anyway, we're doing the best we can trying to figure it all out, but discord doesn't do that. I don't got to worry about all that crap on discord. So, uh, yeah, having a good time there anyway. All right. So let's do it. This week is definitely a cultivation week. Uh, I, I get in real deep with uh stinky foot where we talk about his journey. We'll got him into growing mushrooms, why they matter, um, how they matter to him. Uh, growing tax, uh, definitely some philosophy on breeding and cultivation. Uh, it, it's a pretty great conversation, so let's get into it. All right, welcome to the show, the one and only Stinky Foot. What's up, man? What's going on, brother? How you been? Man, growing mushrooms. It's, you, you know, transitioning from the summer to the winter for me. The basement gets a lot more active. Um, I, I'm about to get hit with sure. some really terrible weather. It, it it froze yesterday, and uh, I'm like, okay, summer's over, fall's over. It's about to be winter. Yep. Um. So, uh, you uh are pretty legendary in my Discord server. You're a very well known guy. Um. You definitely know how to grow some mushrooms, and uh, we've talked about having you on the show before. So I'm just so glad that you're you're finally here, and we're doing this. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I so am I. So I'm like, yeah, let long, uh, we talked, we've talked about it for a while. You got, you got a trip or two planned and everything going on and, uh, Facebook shit. And yeah, yeah. dude, it's fucking long time coming. Well, it's exciting. All right, man. So, so do this. We always do this. We start with that first mushroom memory. Your very first go as far back in, in your memory bank as you can. When anything that looked like a mushroom first hit your radar. Hmm. Uh, Mario, for sure. Like it. Like um, it. N64. Uh, and dude, just periodically, just taking mushroom patches, you know, in the fall. Yeah. Fucking tripping over, tripping over stumps, covered in mushrooms. Never had a fear of mushrooms. Never thought of eating mushrooms. Um, you know, uh, it was only until like later on, I think. Like early, I think early middle school, smoking, smoking pot, you know, you get introduced to uh, different things. I was straight edge, raised Catholic kid. So, um, nah, just, it wasn't really appealing until it was one of those nights, you know, one of those nights you're like, yeah, the mushroom calls you. I, I've, I've come to understand these things happen for a reason and we got to just live, live in the moment, let the, let the moment take you. And yeah. Uh, when I first did mushrooms, it was, ah, oh, dude, they were not dry completely. <laughs> gold, <laughs> crusty gold caps. Uh, uh, didn't know what a gold cap was. Didn't know what anything was about psychedelics ever. I didn't think about it. Didn't know what Timothy Leary was. Didn't know what Derek Terrence McKenna was. Any, anything. It was a juvenile. And um, I was a little uh, a kid at that point. No real maturity. But dude, breaking... Breaking in the fear, you know, that's one of the big things about mushrooms, especially for your first time, is getting over the fear. Uh, you know, you see things in the smoke. Uh, I remember a hurricane I'm from the Northeast. It was a hurricane that came by. It was so cold and wet, you could you could breathe and you could see your it steam up your breath for feet, like through the rain. You could see it just travel like a ghost. And that night, I just, you know, your mind just creates images and you see, like, I was seeing fun. Uh, uh, art, like Japanese artwork in the smoke and the fog, and everyone's laughing. We're trying to build a hut in the pouring rain to smoke a blunt. The blunt's already soaked, everything's wet. Yeah, it's just 
one of those one of those things. It just at, when it, when it's over, you're like, wow, I had, didn't realize I was gonna do that. Didn't know that was ever gonna occur. <laughs> but yeah, and then the the experience takes you further. But that's that was pretty much my first rodeo, and I'm happy to be amongst good friends who were just as adventurous as I was. Yeah, I love so it. Big, big key thing when experience. Oh yeah, like a Yes, feel so. So you, it wasn't completely by yourself, but you weren't like in a super public space. So you, you had some trusted friends who, who kind of uh, were coming from the same place you were. That's that's great. I, oh, yeah. I, I love your your glass here, dude. <laughs> your liquid culture glass. That's great. We gotta um, you gotta test it before. You yeah, you got it. you have to. It. Yes. <laughs> On ice. That's the heart. Uh, that's the heart little ice. Love it. Pull it down. Yeah, just a little cold mic milk. That's that's what it's all you about. Know, that's something about this that that bringing up that memory is that we all have like an older tripper, right? Someone in our lives when we were younger that was like an older trippy person or introduced you to this or that and you didn't know what they did or seen what they did. You, you just had something about them, an aura that they, they weren't like everybody else, blue collar. They, they, they weren't like everybody else. And I, I, I'm very inspired by those people to this day, the unordinary people who just take you out of your moment and they're there because they're themselves. And we, you know, we can't always pretend to be something, but this like, psychedelics is that that purity it lets you be that that truthfulness that honestness so everyone chases it but we really get it in certain moments a lot lot more with like mushrooms i love it yeah, yeah man the those old heads the the people who tr you can just tell there is not a moment in their day when they're worrying what everybody else is thinking about them and and they are yeah. they are on a quest they are on their own journey and they are far enough down that road there is no bifurcation in the path anymore they they are they are on their way those are definitely special people for sure if you know any of those people yes hang out with those people for me those people also played music and i played music as a kid so i i tend to love being around those people and getting a chance to play music with those people yeah, that's special, special time for sure. Cool, man. So, about how old were you with that first, uh, the the first uh, mushroom experience? Oh, 14. Pretty 14, young. Okay. Around that age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, All right. So, so you 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 dabbled in mushrooms as a kid with your friends. Get 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 me your Michael origin story. Get me from that first experience to. Oh, I guess I grow mushrooms now. Well, it was it was kind of after uh, experience a lot more psychedelics, and then moving to a new place, and not having the people in my life, uh, the friends in my life that I used to do that with all the time, and uh, I couldn't trust. You know, mushrooms are one of those things. It's like if you don't know where how old they are, where they're from. Like I'm, I'm always I'm always trust. I gotta trust what I'm what I'm ingesting food wise too. I can't just eat at a random restaurant. I have to talk to someone who's gone there and you know get the same thing as they got. Or just, I, I, there's a there's a thing, it's a thing, and uh, it kind of turned over to to grow into eating mushrooms or finding mushrooms. So I was like, oh, let's see if you can DIY it, right? DIY this, DIY that. It is a strange we, a strange time that we can find out how to do anything just by a few clicks and taking notes and regurgitating and, and figuring out, figuring out, figuring out trial and error. Uh, but that's what it was. Uh, I found out, you know, spores are completely legal uh, in most states. Uh, you can make your own brown rice flour, PRF, BRF. Um, you can order kits, even the BRF kits already made for you. Uh, and then there's so many uh, different ways to do it. So I ordered, uh spores like all in one kit i inoculated the all in one kit with the spores contamination put it to a tub contaminated i uh, lost pretty much everything the syringe the all in one kit and then i was like all right i'm not going to do this again how do i do it myself uh prf i uh, made a few cakes was watching uh 
Julio three five seven uh some some something on YouTube a long five years ago six years ago uh and he was doing the BRF too uh bird wild bird seed set tech and I was like oh this is interesting it's the only thing I could find run through it did it got fruits I didn't have a dehydrator we were doing it in a small perlite tub uh and then uh just kept learning more, learning more from BRF to doing wild bird seed, uh, the spores, making your own agar, you know, uh, still air boxes, open, uh, open pour, open inoculations, just having a very clean environment. Uh, learning all the tricks now, it's it's silly that it's not just like we could just say, hey, just try this and it'll work every time, or most mostly work every time, no, for for a certain percentage. Uh, and then after about a year of just trial and error growing my own medicine because that's really what it was it was just trying to grow my own medicine um and failing contamination uh left and right like 50 percent, 75 percent yeah when you're growing mushrooms by yourself and as a beginner uh no one's like not really helping just following along almost you run into everything i didn't have the money for a pressure cooker i was using an insta pot into the rice cooker it only got to 12 PSI, uh, run it twice. Uh, it, I was using terrible bags from the Dollar Tree. They were just like gift bags you put candy in. Uh, they would melt all the time. So I would wrap the shit out of them with foil, put them in there, run them the two cycles, and inoculate them. And they, they would fuck. They would work. I, I tried everything I could just to get learning, learning by myself, learning and learning. Uh, after a year and a year and a half doing that, uh, the uh, there's a few pictures that um goes through that. It's just we have to. It gets better. Like all those things get better by doing it. Not not only does the mycelium get used to its environment, but also it's it's furthering it. You're making it stronger by growing it. You're you're in, you're make you're helping it grow in every sense of it. Yeah. Um, the, the, so this is interesting, um, getting into like the nitty gritty of working with what you have. I think there is really something to be said about having limitations, um, in working with what you have, but then also going, all right, this is what I got. I tried that. That didn't work. Why, why maybe did that not work? What could I do to improve my odds? And even if you have a bunch of failures, you are literally learning something. You, you, you are, you feel like you're failing, but you are learning. It is part of that in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and you have to, without failure, there's no progression. You, yeah. you will you might get it right the first time. You might get it right the second time. Odds are something's going to happen. You're going to, we get cocky. We yeah. we get overzealous. Oh yeah, it's just, I'm just gonna leave this here and do it this way, just like I did before. It, there's uh, that repetition is is fundamental to growing any skill, any right. skill. Uh, and your my it, tra uh, it translates. Um, yeah, man. So my dad, uh, he, growing up, he now be, this was before. I existed in their lives, but when he was younger, he was a licensed mechanic, a master welder. He, he, you know, jack of all trades, did a lot of mechanical minded stuff. And he used to tell me that the difference between a professional mechanic and a, you know, a DIYer at Homer was that when that bolt gets stuck and you can't get it off, the amateur gives up. The professionals got to get that bolt off somehow you have to overcome your problem that's what makes you a professional it doesn't mean there's not problems it doesn't mean you don't get caught between a rock and a hard place it's that the professional person has to solve that problem and so yeah i, I, I when you were talking about that i'm like yeah dude you you were you were had a professional mindset like i'm going to i'm going to figure out how to do this no matter what I think that's very important for anybody who's working with any kind of limitations, whether it's space, location, finance, whatever, you you can still do it. You just, you're going to have to maybe work a little bit harder or, yeah. Hey, right. Hey, right, dude. You can fuck, you can do it. 
you can, and don't let anybody tell you any different. There's any, there's something different about everybody. So there's something different about what everyone does. That's yeah. a fact. Love it. I don't, yes. I, we, we live in a, we live in this, this one world. So, uh, if you have the means to do this and that, you have the money to do this and that, go for it. I have more power to you, but if you don't let, let's sit down and think together. Let's yep. push, let's push this to that. And you know, you, you're not by yourself. And if you are by yourself, here's some videos that you can watch by yourself. Here's someone you can follow and read the comments and, You'll figure this out very quickly. Do the math, pull out a calculator. It, we have the means. Let's just uh, encourage, encourage. It. Yes, and that whole the uh, I don't know if you've talked to people like this, but I get some people going, "Man, I've been trying for six months, and it's, it's just not happening for me. I think I'm going to give up." And for some reason, they wait till that moment to reach out to me. I'm like, bro, you should have messaged me way sooner than the day you're about to quit this whole thing. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, it is part of the journey, whether you're loaded, whether you're 50 years old, you're at the height of your career and it does, it, you don't even blink to go buy a $2,000 flow hood and a this and the, that, that money doesn't mean you're not going to fuck up. It doesn't mean it, it's going to solve all your problems. You still are going to have to learn. You might have a couple things easier. And if you got no money and you're 18 and you're going, I guess I got to buy some uh, Uncle Ben's at the dollar store and, and I just got to run 20 bags of Uncle Ben's and hope a few of them work. It is still the same thing. You're still learning. You're still having setbacks. You're definitely always, I don't care who you are, contamination is just waiting to happen. So I, I think that's a really good lesson of wherever you're at, whatever means you have, Go for it. Don't feel guilty if uh, if if you got a bunch of money and out of the gate you buy a flow hood. I mean, I talk to these people who are like, yeah, I'm just getting into it. I've not grown any mushrooms. I already own a flow hood. Like you bought the uh -huh. flow hood before yeah. you they ever did they've... anything. Yeah. They oh, man, that's. To grow mushrooms. And they said, OK, I have. The I money. bought it. Yep. Hit the and I mean. That's great, cool, but don't think that, don't think, I get a lot of people that seem like they think, if I just watch that one extra video where I just spend this one extra bit of money, it's all going to work out perfect for me. Like, inherent in this process is setback. It's, you just no. got to accept it. Experience. It hands on experience. Yes. Like you said, like about, the, um, if that bolt gets stuck, you broke, you break the head off that nut. What are you yeah. going to do? Are you exactly. going to call somebody else? Awesome. Yeah, you better have some tricks. And if you don't have the trick, yeah. you better go reach out to that old yeah. dude because he's got a trick he didn't tell you about. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Well, and that's that's another fun thing about mechanics is that, like, uh, I, my father's a master welder, that metal fabricator. Uh, and, you know, we have to be the jackass sometimes. We have to just admit it. Like, we're the fuck, we're the, we're dumb. We're dumb as can be for something. And then that's, you start at the base, start at the ground level. I'm dumb at this. I'm a jackass. Let me learn. Let me, let me kick myself in the ass a few times and pick myself up and get ahead. You don't become the, the best or, the, or good at something. You, you have to, you just, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a great mentality. Yo, man, I, I mean, I only dabble in welding, but there's some stuff where these old school welders, they can just look at a block. Maybe they're welding some aluminum or some stainless steel or whatever. They can just look at it and they can walk over to the machine and they can put all the settings in and and it it's everything's perfect. They pre preheat it just right, all that stuff. And if, if some new welder asks them about their thought process and how they came up with their numbers and all that, it'd be like, 30 years of welding. I've done yeah. it a million times. I just kind of know. I just, it's a, yeah. it's an experiential intuition that grows. Same with like, is this, how's this cake look, bro? Grow mushrooms. You will start figuring this out. Buck it up, fail, succeed, yeah. but pay attention to what you're doing and, and it will come there. There is a part of this that's not in any book. You have to just start growing mushrooms. So I think that's cool that you were, you were like, okay, I'm starting with an instant pot. 
um, I got to come up with a way to keep these freaking bags from melting. And all this stuff is very important because it, it develops the right critical thinking mindset that uh, some people, when they just want the list, they just want the video. And it yeah, doesn't always want, work that exactly. way. Exactly. And, you know, I, I had a lot of, I got, I had the best help I could ever ask for um, out of somebody. Um, after two years of doing it, oh, I kind of just watching videos of myself, trial and error, you know, 50% loss. I'm just, you know, eating, like eating what I have enough to eat, what I grow. I'm not telling anyone about it. I'm just like, cool. Like, Hey, you want to do this this weekend? You want to do that this weekend? I'm starting to microdose every day. I'm starting to work out. I'm trying to think more healthy, be more healthy. You know, I, I, I joined the TTF, which is a very uh, great space. If you're just beginning or you're experienced or, you just want to meet people with the same, like, hey, I like going to festivals. I like going to galleries. I like eating at this rest these fancy restaurants or this low, this, this, these food trucks that pop up everywhere. It's a cool place to be. Uh, but, um, but before I joined that group, I had a certain mindset that I was kind of pushed out, you know, pushed, pushed to believe. And, and it was, um, if I was going to do this for fun, right, I'm going to put my money into something that's fun. Do I have the money to do something that's fun? Or might I put my money into something that's going to build me up, like build my character, uh, build my knowledge up. I'll be able to help people do what I'm learning. Um, so I reached out on a few people on Reddit, and I got a hold of uh, this guy named Justin uh, Justin Trombley. No, not Justin Trombley. Justin, you call him Jay. Yeah. Uh, and he's been doing this uh, for a long, doing it for a long time. Worked with the best growers uh gourmet growers setting up different grows and he gave me the time of day you know he gave me the time of day and it it really set me in the head like wow you're you're giving me your time and i know it's very valuable like, i know what time is um and not only is you giving me time you're teaching me something you're you know you're kind of teaching me to be more of a like a think for myself uh and that's what it was and after two years of doing it for myself, to have someone kind of relay that same message to me really pushed pushed me into being like, fuck, fuck, and I got this, dude. Like, what do I need? Put me, put, set me on the right track, man. Like, I, that's what I want to do. This is what I want to do now. Uh, and the flow hood um, was one of those things. A big part of that is if you can't buy it 10 times, don't buy it. You don't need it. Um, you know, sterilizers, if you can't buy it 10 times, don't buy it. Fridge, can't buy it. Find a way to find a friend. Phone a phone a family member. You know the convenience store is shutting down all the time. Um, there's so many things you can re uh, like reach out to people, but you you find someone who's going to be honest with you and teach you that like discipline in this, uh, just yeah. like any other coach would teach you discipline. That's what it is. Like I I I, I pick my buddies up every day. And I yeah I'm get I get picked up by other people every day. It's a really it's a great thing about community. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, the, you you just saying um, that you appreciated this guy's time, that that you realized he he's, you know, he's a busy guy, but he took the time to help you and you valued that mentorship, that education. I mean, not everybody has that. That's a very, how, however you were brought up or who, whoever you happen to be. Uh, that is a great blessing because you have reverence, you have gratitude, um, and, and that only deepens that relationship. Then, if if you had been flippant and didn't care about the and just took it and took the advice and and left it to the side, you know that would have ended. But but I imagine that he was rewarded for for his time uh, with you and and yeah, deepen yeah. that that friendship. That's very important. Oh, that's up. Uh... That's where I got the sterilizer from. I got my first cultures on agar that were like actual worked from the best hands that they yeah. could have been worked from to come to someone who had no idea what he had in his in front of him. I mean, pe people are so lucky nowadays. It's yeah. five years ago, <laughs> it's you find someone with like like a good culture. You're it, it's it costs money. It costs getting to know somebody who's yeah. willing to do that for you. It's not just like, oh yeah, here's twenty bucks, send me that. It's not, wasn't like that, man. That, right. is, that is craziness. That we build, it's a build of trust. This is what it is. Yeah. Learning through trust, through like knowledge. That's, that's yeah. what I, I truly think is a good quality. And I do, I've been, I've been smacked in the head a few times. That's why I'm a, I'm a good lad. 
we we, we got to pay attention right. and show each other kindness. That's kind of what it's about. Man, that's all it's about. I, I mean, uh, unfortunately, there's a massive amount of people in the world that, that are missing that point. They completely they rather have the yeah. than have the, you know, yeah. have the good, have the goodwill. Yeah. And, and another thing you said, you, you know, don't buy it if you can't pay for it 10 times over. Um, for sure, man. I've met people who are like not paying their rent to go buy a flow hood. Don't do that. Or, or they own a, a you know, a three thousand dollar autoclave, but they don't have a car. Come on, guys. car payments. Yes. Car no, payments. this is not the way. Take care yeah, of life. your. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, and don't yeah, it shouldn't. Discipline, discipline starts at the foundation. You know, keep yeah. your home like keep my keep your house clean, keep your yeah. family good, keep your head good, and then do this. Do this yeah. in a great mindset. It, if you don't, it's things don't turn out good. You're doing right. it like for profit. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to lose every time. I mean, I tell people, uh, I had some guy uh, yesterday reached out saying, oh, you know, I used to be on this and now I'm off and mushrooms have helped. And I think I want to, you know, make this my life. And I said, uh, there's never been a worse time to think mushrooms are going to pay your bills. So um, I would start off making this an enjoyable hobby. If at some point in time, the just the world is conspiring and telling you it could be more than fine, but man, you make more money at Target folding T-shirts. You do. You know what I mean? You, like it's you, not. You certainly do. You certainly do. Hey, yeah. get good at it. Get good at it for yourself. Don't yeah. don't try to be that guy. Don't be that person. Do don't be that person for yourself, especially yeah. with. Well, what you like and what you see. If you see something you like, follow it. Just like anything else. You know, as, yep. um, yeah. Yeah. I, I I try to inspire. That's my whole yeah. thing. It's not even like this to showboat or say this or say that. No, it's just like I rather sh I have someone else grow it to to what they can. They say that's fucking awesome. I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so happy that's doing yep. that, man. That's incredible. I. I'm pro we could both do it 10 times over, but to see you do it, it's just like, that's great. That's more than what I could ever ask yeah. for in something. I can't, hard, I can't handcraft you a, a little canoe and then you do the same thing. You know, like we're doing, right. we're, we're doing the same thing with our hands or creation or creating stuff. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and man, I, I talk a lot with some of the guys in the Discord, and, and I know you've been in, in my Discord, I mean, almost the whole time, right? I, I can't remember, but from pretty early on. Um, and we talk a lot about the good old days of, of the Mushroom Discords when it was small and you could keep up with everything that was going on in every channel and you wanted to. That was part of it. We have very tight-knit community Um and I feel like now it's easy to get lost in the fray. It's easy to see what everybody else is doing and going, I got to hurry up and get there. I got to be as cool as that guy. And if those are your thought processes, you are missing the most amazing aspects of cultivating mushrooms, which is the practice, which is the, the, the joy of what we get to do, which is hold these low mushrooms hands and, and hopefully inspire their their best selves out of those bags or those tubs it's not about a competition you don't win anything if you win that competition anyway so man you're 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 exactly 100 percent right if you want to if you want to win competitions i'm sure there's other stuff that you could do it at that's a lot easier and uh i mean we are competitive you know we're a competitive species sure. but you know it's if you're doing it for fun, like that's that's what that's what should really be the motivator. Yeah. Like the first place prize gets to donate their prize. <laughs> there you, <laughs> you know, go. We have the ability to do those things. We, that's you know. Yep. Donate. Man, I, donate it back into the mushrooms. It's so different now, but I remember uh, early on when I was starting to grow. If I found some new cultigen and it was just really cool, my first impulse wasn't oh shit, I can make a bunch of money on this. My first impulse was, here are like the nine friends I have to send this to. I have to, they have to have the same joy of growing this, this morphology, this expression of these mushrooms. 
it, it came from a way different place than now. Now it's like work cloaked in secret and, oh, I got something special and, oh, now I'm going to be rich. And it's like, bro, you are not even going to ever be rich off that. Why is that your thought process? It's just yeah, not, it, gonna it's take, misguided. It's going to take you a, a lifetime of play transfers to feel rich. That's what it is. That's yeah. what should make you feel rich is being able to do it. Being able to do I'm it. I'm with you. you know, we're able we're able to do it but that's uh that's the wealth for me i have my like uh, close you know even if you're growing in two liters even if you're growing in a basement in a box in a like in a mason jar like you're doing it you're yeah you're doing it you're you're, you're crushing it uh, i i recommend like you're it's honest it's fun it's an experiment yeah. Yeah, man, I'll get these people who uh, they'll show me their first tub and they literally are embarrassed. You can tell they're they're They want to show it off, but you can tell they're disappointed because somehow in their their mind, they got convinced that their first tub was going to just be this perfect full canopy and and it's not. And they got a couple weirdos and all that stuff. And I go, look, man, if that's literally the first tub of mushrooms you ever grew and you have a fruit that you can dry or put in your mouth right now, uh, you've done better than a, like a huge percentage of the people doing it. You and how does it feel? How does it feel? Win your win. You grew a <laughs> fucking mushroom, dude. It's cool. Yeah. Like, All right, do this. So let's... The farmer has to go through to get, a, to, oh, get a, to grow a carrot. You know, a lot of work. fight off like weather, uh, weeds, yep. uh, water. Like you just did that in a closet. Come on, yep. like yeah, have have some have some genuine like yeah. Yeah, well, yourself. dude, it would be like if you go, you know what? I'm I, I, I'm 30 years old. Uh-huh. I never played basketball, but I was watching a basketball game last night, and I just decided I'm gonna go start playing basketball. It's like imagining that you are going to walk onto the court for the first time and your ball handling skills are going to be amazing. You're, you're, you're going to sink all your threes. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be incredible in the paint. You're going to like no other situation. Does anybody think they're going to crush it right away? But for some reason, there's all these YouTube videos. Now people think that just out of the gate, they're going to be masters. Nah. Yeah, no. Uh- it takes practice. It does. Practice. Yes. And, and building a relationship. Common. It. What's that? Like Common said, takes practice. Takes practice. Yes. Hundred percent. Man, he said a lot of stuff. That is, yes, one one of the great things Common said. Yeah, it takes practice. It all <laughs> takes practice. Yo, man, that's like uh, that's like that Outcast lyric. One of my favorite Outcast lyrics is. Uh, Good luck couldn't be bought. See, many a fight had to be fought. G, like saying, like we d- we didn't just buy good luck. We didn't get here because we got lucky or we paid money for it. We had to fight every fight. We had to we had to put in the work. Yes, just put in the work. Enjoy the work. If all you want to do is be you, you you know Eddie Van Halen shredding on your guitar, but you don't like sitting in your room and learning how to do ar- arpeggios. It's never going to be you. You got to like the practice, the day-to-day practice of this. And it is great and it is rewarding, but don't get all caught up in the other stuff. Just learn how to grow mushrooms. And it sounds like you did that and and you were, you were pursuing that for good reasons. So that, and it worked out for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And you know, at, at, at first you, you can, you can provide uh, money from it. Sure. But it's not something. It's it's again like farming. Some um, you can't count on it. You can't count on Mother right. Nature to be your best friend. You can't count on the mycelium to do what you want it to do all the time. It takes practice. It nothing's ever the same. And if it is, you are you got to keep it. So it's like a triathlon. They can the baton. Every yeah. plate is that next person running with it. it. That's what we're doing. That's as simple as it is. You're keeping up. Once you start it, you're keeping up with it. Man, hey, we, that's dead. Once, once you're ahead, you're ahead. Once you're ahead, you're ahead. But you're going to start yeah. something new. You can't just, you know, you, you're finished the race. Yeah, that thing can go on forever now. And no matter where it goes, it'll keep going. 
But you want to start something new and start something cool, you keep doing that and learn how to do it. You, it's like you said, going on that basketball court, you're gonna be you're gonna be winded. You're gonna think you're gonna get that pain. No, you're gonna right. you're gonna get halfway down the court and be out of breath. That's my that's what we have to do for ourselves. Yep. Once you get good at it, you start being able to catch your breath. Yeah. Just, uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah, but I, and then also just for real. Why are you doing this? Why why actually are you doing this? You're you're motivated. You are motivated for a similar reason. I think a lot of people are motivated, which is I'm gonna put this in my body. I don't the guy who wants to sell me some of this at a rave, I don't trust that motherfucker. I <laughs> think I want to grow my own mushrooms. So I'm a huge, huge proponent of grow your own medicine for yourself. Anything beyond that, that's going to be on you. You can figure all, all, all of life out. We're just here to talk about people who want to grow their own medicine. And if you start there for those reasons, you're, you're building a real solid foundation for yourself. Yeah. Um, so you, you talked about uh, getting into uh, Willie Myko, uh, Trip Team Family. Talk to me a little bit about how that came about, how we hit your radar, um, and, and then what that uh, being brought into and then building a relationship with, with that community. What was that like? Yeah, so uh, after, let's call it year three, call it year two, year three, right around that time, I got the flow, I got the flow hood, um, I got it working, um, got set up. And then I think the moment I turned it on, I was like, I have to share what I have. You know, I have to gain more information yeah. by sharing information. That's the only way, you know, you, you get anything. Um, you have to give to get. Um, and that's what I went on. I, you know, it's a, I got on the Discord, it's 20 bucks a month. Um, uh, there, it's, it's, such a, it's like a pri it's private. You feel safe. You feel comfortable. And you feel like there's a paywall for a reason. Uh, like like most Patreons, you know, you're you're helping the people who keep it all together. You, the, the glue needs to stick, and that's what helps. Money is the glue sometimes, and um, the people there, and that's what brings you on. Um, and I was, that's when bags started popping off. So I uh, was growing a tub, and the guy who taught me uh, a lot was saying, "Hey, so much easier to grow in bags. Set and forget. Um, you can test this and test that." Uh, Here's a grain method that would be really, uh, this is the best thing that I've ever come up, uh, I've used. It's passed down through so-and-so and this works well and sticking with it forever. Uh, and um, the TTF was really like a place where I was like, hey, I wanna share what I kind of learned from him. And through bags, you know, I was one of the first people that I seen doing bags in, in such a way that was like filling and healthy and fast. And set and forget. Uh, and then, you know, after a year, two years, you know, even till now, like the people in there are just growing and thriving. Like we, we talked about earlier, you see people come and go, you know, people's lives uh, keep keep moving on. And we're, what was it? This is just an app, the Discord, you know, 20 bucks, you can cancel your membership. You're never going to talk or see those people again, but it's, it's what you learn and what you take from it. And when you get something from something, you should always give back something to something else or back to the same cause. Um, and that's that's what a TTF is. It's, like a, it's a family, the trip team family. They do events every year, giveaways. They're part of a lot of the psilocybin um, research uh, teams going around around the country. Uh, testing, they're part of the testing, the, the cultivars cup. Um, you know, we all have, it's like we're like the five boroughs. We're all part of the same city. Right? We're all doing the same thing. We all represent the same thing, but we're all separated by our opinions or beliefs, or uh, the way we're grown, the way we talk, the way we someone you know we we yeah. some people get X'd out, some people get brought into one side and brought into the other side. No one's bad. No one's too righteous. No one's too you know. We just try to be that the TTF just tries to be pretty even ground. You know, we all have like. Politics is one thing. Like we all just try to support each other individually. We support each other as a group because we support we support each other individually. Like and it. yeah, that that translated well because after being in there, I learned a lot, helped a lot, 
did a lot of it pushed me to do better, which is huge, huge. Find something that pushes pushes you to do the the work of anything. Like keep your lights on. Definitely keep your bills paid and your lights on and gas and gas in the car. But uh, it, that's use this to motivate you to do that. Like right. this is you see hey, someone man. doing well. Use to take that energy. Feed it. Yeah, I, feed the, I feed like it, that mentality it. of uh, if somebody helps you or if, if you get something from something, give back to it. My my parents raised me, leave a place better than you found it, um, which is kind of another way of saying that exact thing. Um, you should want to contribute. You should want to participate. You should, I mean, you are, it's not a community unless everybody in that group is doing that exact thing. That's how the community happens. And if all it is, is somebody asks a question uh, on a Discord server channel and, and you decide to answer that question thoughtfully, that's a small way you contribute. If If it's, hey, I'm struggling i i i i think i'm just not getting good cultures and you say hey i i can send you a, a nice culture that i can promise you is going to get you started on the right foot so we can see what's going on here that's a nice thing you can do it's it is really truly a sign of your gratitude and your perspective that that you have that mentality it's very important we need more people start thinking that way for sure. I, Willie Maiko is a prime example yeah. of that belief and that thinking. He yeah, man, I'm going to tell you right really, now, I'm, really I'm not I've officially... i help hundreds of different yeah. people. Hundreds of them. And it's from the simple questions to the hard questions. Yep. Everyone gets the same kindness and respect. Everyone. It's, yeah, it's, it's remarkable. It really is. It's the kindness that he gives. I don't see it. We, I don't see it every day. It, it influenced me to yep. be the same be good good it's a true namaste true right there yes yeah man he's yeah. been great to me um he, he's been a friend he has been a, a an advisor a, a, a mentor when i ask for some mentorship i i can't say anything but good things about by willie michael for sure um so do this so okay so so you're in the trip team family you're you're growing you're sharing all that kind of stuff and now you're playing with the big boy toys. How, um, what were the big from basically the b very beginning to where you are now? What are some of the, the core must not ever forget fundamental truths that guide everything you do, regardless of whether you're, you're running, uh, PF tech, whether you're running Uncle Ben's, whether you're running jars, bags, tubs, whatever you're doing, what, what, in your opinion, knowing what you know now, are like the fundamental things that you, you got to always keep in mind as a cultivator? Safety. Okay. Safety. Never leave your stove unattended. Uh, never think you know what you're doing or you set the timer. If you think that you should second guess yourself, check it. Check it yeah. always. Always do that. Um, peace of mind is priceless. The flow hood is peace of mind. Sterilizer is peace of mind. Having a clean environment to work in is peace of mind. Having the time to do it, peace of mind. Everything comes with a, a, like a sigil of, like, I have to be comfortable. That's what you should do in, in micro work always. You shouldn't be cooking when you're tired, sterilizing when you're tired. Like you have to sometimes, but don't, don't, just don't risk it. I, I've seen plenty of people blow valves. You know, the thing hits 20, they're fucking shaking. Their fucking <laughs> wife's fucking scared. Like, dude, like, what's wrong with you? Sometimes you just got to stop, take a breath, do it tomorrow. You have plates you got to get to, you got to make agar. It can wait another day. You know, this thing is, is extra tiller, like extraterrestrial, you know, before the dinosaur thing we're playing with, man. Like this is, let it let it sit for a week, two weeks, a day, right. whatever you want, man. It gets to it, you can get to it. Um, and um, Jake, trust your gut is another big one. Uh, I always I always say like, oh, wear gloves. I oh, don't wear gloves. If you have them, you know, it's like the money. If you have it, use it. Why are you gonna around? You know, time is time is valuable for sure. Yeah. But it, 
They just said, someone, oh, I just bought a Polaroid. I never grown mushrooms before. Great. Now, when you start, you're going to start like a rock star. <laughs> that's, what, that's what should happen. You should be a rock star. And sometimes rock stars hit rock bottom and they have a comeback tour. Yeah, it's life. That's what, that's what you can do. Uh, um, try, I mean, try everything. You know, like that agar picture I sent you. Um, uh, Dustin taught me a lot of fun stuff about how the history of this. People, we've been doing this for a long time, and the, this this little side in this this Cubanzies, like they they've been worked and played with, you know, sixty, seventy, eighty years yep. in the shadows, grown, and you know, we're just scratching the surface on what we can find out. There's plenty of companies that have a lot of more information, but they the why were they they're not going to risk the legality of it. You know, everyone shouldn't know this stuff. Everyone should not know this stuff. Simple as that. It's trusted information that we share to our friends and colleagues, just like any, you know, family business or family heirloom or, you know, a church doesn't tell us all its secrets. It's like the Masons, man. To. Yes. Yeah. I, we don't. Sure. We, we do to our people. We, we do for each other. That's a huge, right. huge part of our culture. And it's underground for sure, but it's not. It's mainstream. It's talked about in the news. It's on ballots and being passed in like open house, open chambers, chambers where, you know, people of wealth and knowledge have roamed and started. It's crazy. It's awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. We should be very proud of where it's at. We should be very proud of where. The people who did this before us took it. Uh, Homestead Book Company putting ads in the in their magazines. Right. High Times doing the same thing. Uh, that's we we don't we we don't discredit them, but we should give them more credit for doing it. Because if it wasn't for someone introducing me to it, a person introducing them to it, I probably wouldn't be the same person. I probably wouldn't be a caring, loving, genuine person as I am. Truthfully. Yeah. It's true, man. But yeah. Just, so uh, a lot of that is, gets missed these days the because is the goal. Yeah. It's so transactional now. It's, uh, you know, way back in the day, the only way you learned anything, there was no internet, no computers. People didn't even have access to books. So the only way you learned anything was to just listen to somebody tell you a story, right? The original education was, was being told a story. And now it's not that way. Now it's uh, information's lost value. It's just, of course, all the information for anything I want to know is out there. I just have to go get it. Um, but boy, oh boy, it's, it is important to remember uh, all the hard work that people have put into this, especially, like you're saying, it's underground. It's uh, often cloaked in secret, and that is for people's safety. That is uh, for their longevity, for, for their protection. And uh, at the end of the day, a lot of people made some really, really great discoveries by trying things out. FAFO all day. There was no other way to do it back in the day. There only was FAFO. And uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty spoiled now. So all these new people coming in, you know, there, there are... Uh, there is a history to this, like you said, decades and decades, 60, 70 years of, of people, well, uh, whatever. Yeah, since the 60s. So we're talking, yeah, 60, 70 years, pretty close. Um, uh, history of uh, people trying to figure all this out without the help of modern day science, without the help of uh, well-funded uh, programs, just trial and error, trying to get it figured out. I think that is... Ralph Singer published a lot of books. He's mm -hmm. one of the OG uh, yep. taxonomists. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, I, I, I promote that. Go to your local libraries or secondhand stores. Look for mycology books. They're, you'll find more information here than than me, than I could tell you or teach you. If you actually right. read it cover to cover and then reread it, that's, this is what puts you in a different place than a lot of other people just trying. If you want to do it, pick up a book. Yeah. You could learn a lot. I'm with you on that, man. And, and these days, you don't even got to go to your library and buy a book. You, there's there's somebody that's got a PDF link he can send you of like 
70 PDFs of all these mycology textbooks and all the classic psychedelic texts and all that stuff. Yeah, just start. Uh, I'm with you. Start reading. Get some perspective. Even if there is new text, learning what the old texts were and thinking about why they tried that and why that was the approach or why that worked for a certain amount of time, even that informs and, and it helps you understand where we're at and what we're doing, why we're doing it the way we're doing it. Yes. I like it. Um, yeah, all right. So, before the internet. Yeah, dude, like, like utterly before, before the internet. Yeah. They discovered things like we should, we should be discovering right. things for ourselves. And they and discovered things this person, that person. And they didn't have a discord to go brag about it in. They just discovered something in their yeah. fucking barn and it they couldn't tell anybody. They just figured something out and they go, okay, great, cool. Yeah. Now I can do this. Um, that was definitely the dude that, that we got mushrooms from growing up. That was a dude in a barn, didn't talk to anybody. We never dealt with him. It was always his kid um, because, man, he surely figured a bunch of stuff <laughs> out. In his, and he was like a mason, man. He wasn't going to tell you any of his secrets. You work way oh, too hard for it. Hilarious. That's yeah. hilarious. It makes you want to know more, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, I want to meet those dudes. <laughs> Every time, still to this day, when I talk to people, I'm like, you know, for all of us now, all of us little mainstreamers that we're in the discords, we're in Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on shroomery, all this stuff. There is still some random dude in the middle of nowhere that's not on any of that stuff growing mushrooms his own way. Not you never completely... heard of the, you never heard of the old man in the mountains? No, what's that? There's a, um, there's a man. Um, uh, the story is this. I forgot his name, but he's like an old school girl. I don't know if he's passed on now, uh, but he's referred to as the um, old gay man in the mountains. And his, okay. his teachings were um, he grew mushrooms on compost uh, in to like in tunnels and caves everywhere. Like he had a farm, every, like every he had everywhere. But the magic was the if you want to grow mushrooms, it's simple, simple as this: more grains, more substrate, more mushrooms. That's all it is. You right. figure out how to make more grains. You figure out how to make more substrate. That's how you figure out how to make more mushrooms. It's yep. not more complicated than that. I like and it. that's uh yeah it's it you push push that yeah, that's why i try to do it. it's that simple just take your take your head out of the game take your head out of that tight little knot you have it in and then you know think of just yeah what it is i like that yeah i have not heard that one that's cool, cool. yeah digress Dang it. i like it yeah the old the old gay man in the mountains the old gay hermit <laughs> who grows mushrooms in caves you i have, love it you had a Masonic shed and grower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's true. It's very true. Yeah, the uh, one thing that's been interesting. One thing that's been interesting to see is um, the, and I think we're finally at a point where you can see because of the trouble with Facebook these days. You know, you're seeing a lot more people come and go. You're going, oh, that guy who I've had five conversations with. And every time it was, I love this. This is my life. I'll never not do this. And then they're gone. And you're like, oh, okay. Talk's cheap. I get it. All right. There, there, and then there are other people who I talk to off and on. They're not bragging. They're not trying to show off their fruit. Um, but they're always there. They're always growing. I can always, you know talk about stuff, bounce ideas off them. Um, they're not going anywhere. It's become a way of life for them. I'm definitely appreciative of those, the stability that comes from those people versus the, you know, I'm going to do this this year and then, and then go away next year. And that's fine. You get to, if you're that person, you get to come in and figure that out and leave. No big deal. But man, there's a, a lot to be said about those people. I mean, I, I like, I like that. I honestly, I, I really do appreciate someone who is, feels like they can come in someplace and leave. They can take what they need yeah. and move on. That's that's like a that's like a good you know, someone on a journey. That's completely mm -hmm. okay. Just don't pop up next year selling all of those LCs. 
or is going to pop up next month yes. selling all the LCs that you just bought. Because then that on then yeah. then we're all going to be like, hey, you're a uh, what are you doing? What are you what yep. are you doing here? <laughs> yep. How what's life like? How's how's you know the kids you talked about and the family you had? Oh, none of that is existing right now because you're doing something, you know, colonialism. Like you're trying right. to profit off of our community. It's yeah. Let the creators let donate and donate to the creators. You know, push, push the knowledge, people teaching things. You know, donate to this, this, and that. But if you take it and you come back and try to take more away without giving back, we're all gonna have a little bit of a issue yep. with it. And I, I personally take, uh, take it personally, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't, because that's it's so minute, minute and little. But it could, you know, it could ruin someone's first experience when they yep. try to grow something because you sold them something contaminated, and then everyone who's trying to help them don't know. The person yep. that they got it, you know, it's just it spirals out of control when we're not doing honest, truthful work and being there for for the community. Yeah, dude. Like people ask me, uh, I want to. Uh, what's that? I'm like, here's the website to order your scores. You know, come back when you need help. Yeah, that's completely. Yeah, that's completely cool. <laughs> Yeah, this this day and age, when people ask for a certain cultigen, uh, assuming I'm familiar with it, I used to know them all. These days, it's hard to keep up. There's everybody likes to name cultigens, but back in the day, it was like, oh, you want Jack Frost? Cool, go ask Dave Wombat for it. If he doesn't respond to you in a month, then I can I can tell you somebody maybe who can get it for you. But man, the people who did the work to isolate something or to breed something, those are the first people you should go to to buy your genetics from and a story or you will lose those people then you won't have anybody doing that work and we'll just be left with a community full of culture vultures who are just endlessly cycling the same things around and then five years later they go why isn't there anything new well because you you you, you did not reward those putting in the work and and actually caring about the community enough it's not That's even a complicated. Point. That's a very good point. So yeah, it's uh, and I've seen that numerous times. I've I've seen in groups. This is back uh, before this whole Facebook thing. I saw people come into groups, and I, I I pay attention. I keep my my eyes open, and I'm like, this guy's kissing everybody's ass. He's kissing it real hard. I wonder if this guy's about to get ready to to start selling a bunch of shit because he's kissing everybody's ass. He's getting everybody's best shit. He's paying for it sometimes. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes they're they're being nice to him because he's playing the role of perfect student. And then all of a sudden, they're they're in business. And I'm like, man, you didn't do shit, dude. I've been doing this four years. I still wouldn't have the audacity to. And I've isolated stuff. I bred stuff. I, I still don't have the audacity to go. Oh, but I should be. I should be out slinging my my stuff. Hey, and at the end of the day, it's all love because we're all scraping the same fucking plate, and it is yep. it is tough. We all are grinding, and everyone's struggling through this and that. So if you do what you got to do, just know we all notice. We all notice. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We got it's, you. Got to care about the community. You you do. Yeah. Yeah. You got hey, to. If, if the you elephant's have in to. the room, the elephant's in the room. That's just that, that's yeah. just how it is. Unless someone brings it up. It's, all elephants always going to be in the room. That's how it is. It, we're like a big, weird family, bro. That's what it is. It is a big, weird family. Yes, it's the only family weirder than my own family. But yes, it's a big, weird family. Um, all right, let's talk about this. So so you made the transition from tubs to bags. Um, are you still on bags? Yeah. If so, why? And tell me some of your tips and tricks with bags. Yeah, uh, so uh, um, I still grow uh, do tubs, and that's just the seed expressions um, in phenotype, uh, and just trying to gauge where the morphology goes and how far it goes to. Um, I will pick uh, something to get scores and try to uh, regrow to see if it keeps giving me that same outcome, same frail cap, same psyche stem, same clusters, 
Um, uh, but bags, bags really have the appeal to just uh, know exactly what you're putting in and getting out. Uh, tubs, it's hard to manage um, tubs if you don't have it dialed in the environment. The warmer you are, um, you know, things, the drier environment you are, the more your tubs will leach the humidity. The more humid environment you are, the less humidity you need in the tub, the more expanding you're going to have to do. Uh, the amount of fresh air exchange all depends on what you have going on in the room. Uh, like an oscillating fan or if it's just closed still air, things are going to get stagnant. Uh, you're going to have a lot of CO2 build up in a lot of your tubs. Bags have that filter. Um, and filters always differ. Uh, you can use the A filter. Uh, you can use the D filter. You can use the extra big filters. All these companies are popping up. Uh, it feels like every time one is sold, a new one pops up. It's just uh, how how bags, how everything works. You know, if there's McDonald's competing with Wendy's, Wendy's competing with Taco Bell, yada, yada, yada. Um, and we just have to try and test and share what we gain from experience. Uh, and bags seem to really show great promise if you have a not so clean environment, if you don't have a lot of grain spawn, you don't have a lot of substrate, you don't have the space to tub or fan or the time to fan and mist things, throw it in a bag with a filter patch. Um, that, that patch is going to be the lungs, um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be the, the way the bag, the bag is able to filter and breathe clean air. And it's, it's done wonders for me. I mean, it's done wonders um, for lots of people. Uh, eat gourmets, is, gourmet mushrooms are the key ticket to, um, to really promoting bag growing. Uh, in all in all things, uh, you want to eventually we're going to be able to grow like microgreens in bags. We're going to end up growing everything in a bag because our environment's going to be too dirty, too covered with that score, too too dirt, covered with dust and smoke. You, every room's going to have to have an air filter in, it, or every house is going to need uh, some type of ventilation. It, we do clean work. We we have to be in a clean environment, and we don't have that. Not in not where I live. There's too much pollen from the trees. There's fucking like, construction going on down the street every other day. Concrete dust and silica, and you know we just just um, the bags really keep it clean. Um, you could really do well with tubs uh, for yields. Even the yields is like the main thing for tubs. You want to have enough mushrooms uh, to grow to eat for a month, and you only have one tub. You could do it. You know. For for yourself, that's enough for yourself. For or for your spouse, two tubs. You know, for you know, if you're a shaman and you're growing for people coming to you for like medical help and spiritual uh, help guiding, three tubs. That's enough. That's enough for your for your for your people. Um, but bags, um, will be like that. You're gonna get less yield, but the peace of mind. Like again, clean air, sterile environment, just the mycelium thriving. Uh, it it's, pr promotes good, healthy growth. I, I advocate for bags. Get them wherever you can. Promote the people who've been doing it the longest. Um, um, you know, Myers is a huge, huge confidence booster uh, for me to watch um, like Myers Mushroom grow as, as big as he has over the years and innovation in it and showing innovation in it. Um, you know, uh, you can get bags on Amazon, but that's not supporting anybody except right. the guy that bought a pallet of them through Amazon Warehouse. Now he's right. solely selling a pallet of them for six months over a year. Dude, it's just, it's a weird place if we can't navigate it for each other. Right? right? Like, with, if yeah. there weren't road signs, how the fuck would we know where to go? Like the guy that put that road sign there, thank you, bro. Thank you for putting that there. I need to know. We we kind of need to know. I did in the right path. I like that. Yeah, man. Bags. I tell everybody every time I have somebody hop in my DMs, going, I just can't beat this contamination. I'm doing ever. I ask all the usual questions, and and it really just sounds like their environment is definitely conspiring against them. And then I say, do you have you ever tried bags? No. Nope. Okay, let's let's go ahead and give bags a try. And every single time things once they get over the learning curve, bags solve that problem for them. I, you do not have to open that bag up. 
You do not have to. If you don't want to, I do. I, I give it a little fruiting air uh, at once it's fully colonized, but you don't even have to do that. I know people who truly spawn to bulk, set them in a corner, wait till the bag's full of mushrooms. It's it's hard to yeah. hard hard yeah. to argue with. Yeah. Really is hard to argue with. Sam, now um you, you learn you learn how to um how to set them too. Because it's set and forget. You have to learn how to right. set them so that they you don't have to touch them. That's a big part of it, like forming forming the block, um, you know, making sure everything's equal, even you might have to cut a little hole in it, or like you, like you said, you do open it up to get some fresh air. But it's super clean. Um, you know, it's not going to get, it's not going to crack and break on you, and then you're not going to use it again. Right. The majority of the time, it's one and done. And you don't have to clean it. I know you people who twelve dollars for a tub, and you drop it. <laughs> Shit! Now right. you're out twelve bucks in a tub. Yeah really there there's just a lot of I'll tell you the only thing I still like tubs for is if I'm truly just looking to see how pretty that freaking mushroom can be for me and and I I still like I like a tub for that but man if I already got something isolated and I know what it does and I'm just trying to grow more of it hard to beat the old the old bag is kind of where it's at for me um and, and then contamination yeah and it, it, it contains it <clears throat> I, I mean there's just so many positives to yeah. it i i don't know too many people now that and that usually is in the grains sure yes yeah 100 okay. percent uh, but man when you start growing a lot of mushrooms if you're growing a lot and one tub contams and you're not keeping your eye on it and and it sporulates and the next thing you know every tub near it is contaminated and maybe now you got a problem them them bags seem to contain that a whole lot better never and you can just throw it out you you, you don't got to go well i got this tub that had a bunch of trichoderma in it how well do i got to clean it did i clean it well enough the the bag it just gets tossed you don't got to think about it again yeah, I, 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 I'm with you on that. Now, so talk to me about the the air. You sort of mentioned it. I, I said what I do, which is I usually just give it. Now, this can change. If for some reason the bag looks too wet, then I will definitely air it out a few times, try to try to get it where I want it. But ideally, I'm only opening it once, once it's colonized, giving it some fresh air, and then I leave it, I leave it be till it's done fruiting what do you like what is your process and, and and again for those watching it truly might have to be different for you and where you grow at so that you know just just understand that when you hear somebody say this is what i do this is what works for me th that exact thing might not work for you but but i i am interested in hearing your approach to uh getting more air into the bag slits holes opening it up what do you do Uh, so a lot of the time uh, we talk about it, uh, we call it like bag trained. So uh, some genetics that have been grown, let's say they first started from spore six months ago, a year ago, and we're getting uh, samples, testing samples uh, of them to see how they yield the potency. And they, the, they just, they don't do well in bags. Uh, and that is because I believe that the abundance of fresh air that they're used to over their lifetime, and that's what they expect every time. They expect to be to eat through the eat through their grains, get to their substrate, and go up for fresh air. Right? That's what they do. Um, without the lack of fresh air and air movement, they will stall. They won't pin, or they'll pin and uh, they'll the hyphae will create primordia, and the primordia will never come to maturity. Um, and that's that's what happens when you have kind of sluggish, oldish uh, mycelium that's just been grown in tubs and grown repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. So I would always uh, say for anyone starting bags to get something from score, start spores for yourself on agar. Um, that's how you get them well adverse to their environment. If I can repeat, if I can get something to like an environment and that's what they'll be growing in for consecutive months, 
that's what they'll thrive in. Now, we translate the uh, bag environment to a tub environment. They're going to grow a lot bigger and you get more of a yield because they were quote unquote bag trained. Um, that's just that just means that they were grown in a particular environment that makes them more robust and capable of handling higher CN2 levels. Um, they are more likely to stretch and show more expressions than just your normal tub grow where they just they have plenty of fresh air. So all they want to do is grow and drop spores where the bag trained ones will just keep growing and growing because they're searching, they're going to the filter set. So they're going to grow eight inches, 10 inches to get to that fresh air without dropping spores, without creating any messes. Um, and once we start them, um, we find great, uh, great success in them. Uh, like the hill, like you see a lot of hillbilly pumpkins when that came out, hill, that's just an isolation of hillbilly. Um, that just, Oh, hillbilly and something else. It's just a monstrous, monstrous growth. Doesn't need barely any fresh air. It um, working with the flow hood, working in a clean environment. When we seal these bags, we're trapping the fresh air inside there. A lot of it. That that patch um, will clean any fresh air coming in and any gas going out. But that allows for you know a plenty of exchange. Uh, when you buy a kit in the store. I have a, that's another pet peeve of mine, the grow kits you buy in stores. You have to open it up. And if you're not opening it up in a clean environment, you're going to trap spores and right. molds and anything else in the air in there when you do that. Um, any kit that you buy should be recommended to use a spill air box or some type of type of filtered air room to uh, grow tent something. Um, something that has clean air in a clean environment. Uh, um, Bag trained mushrooms should should be what we should all be growing in um, at any level. Um, if you get spores or a spore swab from something, that you should know, like, oh yeah, this thing is this is not from a second flush. This is not from a dead mushroom. This is from a very healthy, selected, purposely done thing that someone took the time to do. It's not a one off. Um, and that's another thing with cultures too. If, if I was to give you a swab and do something else. That's that's you know kind of a it's not embarrassing, but it's like oh it happens, it happens. It should it should translate somewhere else down the line. Like I'm kind of cool I did that for you, but if, if it's like a culture and it's like mislabeled or it doesn't do what you think it's or what you was promised of it, so you know the the reviews are everywhere. Everyone has a different review for everything. Right. Yes. But if if it's like hey this is I got mold I got pink mold, purple mold, lipstick mold, mm -hmm. mold. I just, that wasn't what I thought it was. I paid, paid money for that. Right. Um, but yeah, bag trained, bag trained is a big thing and you'll start seeing big farms uh, growing, like like the one in Canada, they grow in like max yield bins. Uh, I don't know, whatever. It's like, if it's a product, they can use it. It's there, it's viable, it works. But they're growing in an environment where they don't need the lids. They can use the lids for an incubation and they take the lids off and fruit in that yep. fresh air environment. Where bags, you have something trained in bags, you don't need a lid or a bin or that environment. You just need a place that has clean air and uh, uh, steady temperatures. Right. Warm, steady temperatures. The common, yeah, common, man. Te common things are misle misleading. Like like night and day, that, that temperature swing. That mushrooms should have that, just like we do. When we sleep, we cool down. It, that's the same type of thing that we kind of have to be like, okay, we can't just keep it at excessive 6, 78 degrees all day. Let's turn the heat down a little bit at night. That's, you know, we want to promote healthy growth, not uh, stressful growth. You right. definitely get mutations. You definitely get weird morphed twin mushrooms by, you know, the environment changing drastically, but we should, that's another big thing about growing is that keep it comfortable. That's it. Keep it comfortable. Yeah. I see one, one of the things a lot of new people do is they want to just heat it up real quick and, and they haven't, you know, they, they probably are not as sterile. They haven't learned sterility well enough. They might, their, their text might not be as exhaustive and, and safeguarded against contam. And so they're cranking the heat up. And and all they just get themselves into problems, and I'm like, man, most people's basement is probably an okay temperature. You you can grow mushrooms, uh, at least you know the kind we're talking about. You can grow those in 
almost any basement around the country. Maybe there's some some pretty hot basements that would almost be too hot, but I'm assuming those houses are air conditioned. Um, yeah, you don't yeah, gotta got you don't gotta heat it up too an much. Insulated basement. Yeah. It's an insulated basement for sure, but yeah, yeah, definitely basement is a good place for yeah. um for anyone to start. I mean, it's kind of if it's insulating, clean, carpeted, sheetrock, go for it. But if it's yep. wood planks, then you can hear the neighbor snoring <laughs> or right. someone snoring to the floor. You should get a still air box. Yeah. Yes. For <laughs> no sure. matter what. Yeah, I like. I'm glad you brought up bag trained. I think that is definitely. I mean, there are now culture vendors who pride themselves in saying, "Hey, you know, all my stuff is bag trained. You're you're getting something that's ready for bags, tested in bags, repeatedly. It gets refreshed periodically. All that good stuff. That that is definitely important. I have definitely encountered s- some strains that don't care for bags. Um, there there are a handful where I. I will still grow them in bags, but I I know that I'm not getting quite as pretty a flush as I would get if if I took the extra time to do it in a tub. But you really bring up a good point, which is tub grows. You 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 got to do a little bit more babying. You got to pay attention to things, or you got to really get your setup, your fruiting room dialed in so that there's some consistency there. Because otherwise, you're gonna be doing a lot of farting around the bags once you get your field capacity right and your your grain spawn is clean i mean it's it's good you're you're good what were yeah, you gonna I re- say i remember uh, uh flipping the lid was like a big thing yeah just flip the lid mm-hmm. just flip the lid go ahead flip the lid i'm like yeah dude don't don't tell anybody to just fucking flip the lid please like don't do that crack it crack mm-hmm. the lid Crack the lid. Yeah. Do not flip the lid. It's, you're gonna. Oh it's man. That, uh, I, I, it yeah. works. Sure, it works, but not for everyone. So don't tell. Well, everyone. how, how, also, how many people who flip the lid are literally taking the lid that has accumulated airborne contaminants and, and built up on it? And of course, ninety percent of these new people have—they're uh, not cleaning or wiping down the the lid before they flip it. They're not doing it in front of a flow hood. They're just flipping they it know. and they're just dumping contamination onto the surface of that cake. Yeah, this is why these are all these little things that once you figure out sterility and all that makes sense. No one has to teach it to you because you just go, "Wait a minute!" But this has sat like this for a month. I should probably it. clean it. But yes, in the yeah, beginning, well, you absolutely I, have I remember to. Remember saying it. Um, the whole "keep it simple, stupid." Um, uh, months back on another podcast, and like that's what Justin kind of, you know, kind of distilled in it. It's like, why make it harder for yourself? Why? Why right. over? Why overdo it? Why overthink it? Just shoot your shot. You shoot your shot, yeah. and you know, worst worst that you do it again. More mushrooms. You, the recipe for more mushrooms is more brains, more substrate. Yep. It's it's we it's what we do. Eventually, you get good at it. Eventually, it becomes that fun thing that you love to do. And if it doesn't, then you should pick up racquetball or pick. Yeah, or what's the new one? Pickleball. Yeah, everybody loves pickleball, dude. It's gonna put tennis out of business. I'm like, holy shit, people. Are oh yeah, pickleball. It's crazy. It's gonna be in the Olympics. Yep. It's gonna be in the Olympics. Oh wow. That that it'll be right after break dancing. Yes. Right oh, after man. break dancing. Don't don't get me That's started on the break I'm dancing. Sick. I'm yeah. I'm just gonna go home and I don't feel good. Just don't yep. yeah. Yeah, man. The um oh shit. Yeah, some of that stuff uh some but everyone's learning style's different, right? Like some people you can tell them but you might as well have not told them. They just, they can't, it, it goes in one ear and out the other. They're not listening. They don't want to listen. They know better. They, 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 they ask the same question to 30 different people. They get 30 different responses and then they come up with their own version of it. Amalgamated from all these different responses. They're not, yeah. they're not necessarily looking for commonalities in what everyone's saying. They're not necessarily synergizing the information properly. They're just taking it in and then doing whatever they want to do anyway. 
And to those people, I just say, you should have just done it. If you knew better, then just go for it. Don't ask a million questions. See what happens. Like everybody used to have to do anyway, which is they just went for it. And then slowly over time, they, they learn what works and what doesn't. But man, when you got somebody who knows how to grow mushrooms telling you how to grow mushrooms, just pick somebody and listen to them and see how that goes for you. Well, it's, a, it's fun when, when you spend the time and you give someone advice. Um, you know, you're helping them all the way through. And then you say, they ask you a question, you give them your opinion, advice, what you would do. And then they come back and tell you that they're going to do what someone else says. It's like, oh, right. well, then don't ask, okay. me for, don't ask me for help. If yeah. that works better, yeah. do it your way. Do it your way. But I like mm -hmm. it. I more more power to you. But yeah. when it comes again to ask for more help, I'm going to say refer to X, Y, and Z because right. I'm doing, I'm busy. I got, I, I, yeah. I tried. I tried once. I tried twice. I tried three. Yeah. It, I'm with it. You can't, you can't waste time. You can't waste time. Yeah, I, I, I get these guys. I can tell they're the guys that are going to watch a thousand hours worth of YouTube videos. And I know what they're doing. They want to they wanna crush it out of the gate. They want to be perfect. They think that watching videos on growing mushrooms is going to solve all the problems. It's like watching a DIY channel video on, you know, laying tile. I lay tile. You can watch as many videos as you want. But until you're down there mixing your mud, back buttering, setting it, tapping it, getting the angles right, until you're doing it, mm. you don't know fuck all about anything. That's why I tell everybody, yeah. whatever studying you've done, it's probably enough. You got to now go, what, what is the very first thing I need to do to grow mushrooms? And go freaking do it and just start practicing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get a car unless I knew how to change the tires and change the oil. Yep. Old school, bro. That was, yes. That was, <laughs> that was the bottom line. If you can't, yep. you keep, don't, call, you don't call me. You want, you want, you want responsibility. This is what responsibility looks like and feels yep. like. That's, yep. that's, that's love. That's love. Yeah, man. That's I'm with you. I had to buy my car. I had to pay for my insurance. I had to pay for my gas. I definitely, I, I was mechanically inclined. I already know how to do all the other stuff. But yeah, it, it was all on me 100%. And my first car had to be a stick had to know how to drive a stick there it, it was like you got to take this seriously i definitely learned that driving a vehicle was a responsibility you had to take seriously mm -hmm. and uh yeah man same with these mushrooms right you you just that's uh how, that's how i take it that's how i take yeah it. you growing mushrooms you're not handing it out to people uh you know your buddies and your friends okay but that's a serious thing you're handing somebody that can go south you better be have enough experience for yourself to give a good amount of basic advice and guidance for those people if they are not familiar. Oh man, we should, we should doing... do another do another podcast because I have a lot of things are unfolding and the, the legal um, aspects down on the East Coast here in like Massachusetts, and yep. um, there are, I'm helping bring legislation from California, um, Arizona, Denver. To the uh, uh, people here, the council members here in the small, like local um, areas, um, and they're already doing that up in Salem. They're already doing that, like in like, Dorchester and um, a Boston area. Slowly moving, slowly moving south. You know, Rhode Island's doing the same thing. Connecticut will probably follow suit. New York will follow suit once the northern states do, um, and that's gonna unfold in the next couple of years. And so yeah. we. As cultivators have, like you said, is we can't just hand this out. This is something that has been worked on for decades and decades and decades. It's been a lot of hard work and love and, and prosperity have gone into it. So it, it can't just be one of something that's just handed over. Um, yeah. it, just, it, just, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be um, to anybody. Um, and I, the next spot, like that's the next podcast because what we're all thinking like at it. the end of the day is, is post, is post, um, um, post treatment. Yep. They don't talk about post treatment for any for anything, and this is something serious for me. Like, like in my heart, and you know, I want this is changing the world. This is what we're doing. We're changing the world every day. We wake up and do this. You know, every day we wake up, we we got to change something about it. And um, that's hopefully we're able to do that. Um, and this is super super important. Super super important that the post 
uh, after you take this medicine, you know, what you're feeling, what you're describing, how to kind of come back into the world, uh, like right. to call uh, the word for it. So you like re your integration, reintegration. Yeah. Yep. Yes. That's exactly what it is. Yep. We need to talk about that. More importantly, yep. the taxation, where it's sold, how it's done. How does this affect people afterwards? This is way more important than growing them, in my opinion. I, I, yep. I could focus all my energy on that and it wouldn't, it would push, it, it, I would try to push the bar. Um, and that, I mean, that should go for every state doing it, every country doing it. It's the post, the coming back into society after, you know, experiencing something very spiritual, very life changing, possibly. Yeah. I agree, well, man. Yeah. Oh, we, I, I mean, we, we, I have had people on only talking about integration. Uh, we, we recently, me and Dr. Rick, we talked about a paper, a seminal paper that was put out by a bunch of psychiatrists. Uh, it, it, it saying, look, this is coming up in therapy sessions. People are talking about having these experiences, but we have no training in how to integrate that experience. It's clearly profound experience for these people. I don't know what to do. What paradigm should I use? I've not been trained on this. Um, so yeah, whenever, however, I'm always up for having uh, in, integration talks. I, I think there's uh, there are podcasts that seem to be very focused on that. They also, however, seem to be very anecdotal, like just here's someone who had a positive outcome from using psychedelics. They're going to tell you their story and bounce some ideas off of. But I love the idea yeah. of getting way most, more serious time, about that. That's most of the time. That's all crystals and and sound, um, sure. you know, sound bowls. You know, that's right. not it's, it's what what we do when we're looking right. in, at it on the dish. What it translates on a on a uh, in, into a, a, a tub or a bag, to, uh, that experience we share with it. You know, we see it from from cre like from nothing to something. And for us, yeah. it means a lot more to, than just you know having that one time. So yeah, but we're we're hoping to that everyone has that one time, and it's it's resonating. Sure, sure, it is resonating. But be able to take away from it more than what you know, more than what you you know you yeah. did. It's like uh, it's like a ceremony almost. You're really giving yourself up to uh, this crazy thing that will make you, will get to heal you beyond belief. It could set you straight on a lot of things, cure a lot of things that you have going on. And some people need to have that. Um, yeah, I see it differently because yep. how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that perspective, the perspective that it gives you if you just get a glimpse of this this other perspective, and depending upon who you are, there are people who can do their own integration organically, natively within themselves. That is not the majority of people. So many people need some level of support beyond themselves to properly reintegrate. That used to be the role of the shaman. Uh, not, now that's, uh, you know, a lot of different people that can be all sorts of people. And uh, it's the key. Otherwise, you end up like some of these guys I'm talking to where they're like, I just do it every weekend. I'm having a trip every weekend, bro. There is no way you are integrating everything that's happening on every trip in six days. You are not taking... I'm I'm kind of like familiar with like the AA kind of setup where everyone gets a chance to speak like in abuse therapies as well. Um, so in in that kind of setting, I think that'd be great for integration. You know, uh, and yeah. for for really for being like, hey, you want to do something? You're a part of this. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to yeah. so and so. Will be your coordinator for this and this. You're not alone in it. You can do it however you want to. Tea, chocolate, peanut butter and jelly, but we're there beginning middle and an after and through you know throughout and that's i think that's the responsibility of even being able to prescribe these things that's what the shaman yep. that's why there was a shaman that's why yep. there was a guide it's it's, it's powerful it's very powerful stuff yep. Which we don't treat it that way anymore it's recreational to a lot of people but you know, as you know it has created peace and and happiness and a lot of you know a lot of broken they, tools, a lot of broken yep. people.
it it has truly unbroken people who thought they were going to be broken forever yes in a way that nothing else has ever been able to do that for those people yes i'm with you it's hard though because there's uh you got you, you know you got the old school um psychonauts just people that enjoy having their consciousness altered and some psychonauts are 100 percent deeply spiritual others are not so it, there are people who use this recreationally and for euphoric feelings for just like a little roller coaster ride and and that's fine too but uh, for real what gets this decriminalized and or legalized is because of the actual human currency and healing and and positive impact that it makes on people when it is used as a medicine when there is a spiritual component to it. So yeah, I, I'm with you. And, and I had uh, a guest on, uh, she she wrote a book uh, focused on female curanderas, uh, talking about these, these female guides that guided people through these experiences. And she said, it's interesting, we are looking at this movement through the lens of um, medicine, right? Like a health, strictly like, like a drug I can take to fix a medical problem. We're looking at it through a legal, you know, lens. She's like, but we're, it doesn't seem like we're currently talking about it through a spiritual lens. And how are, how are we missing the boat on that? Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it, it can be. There aren't any real spiritual leaders besides the Pope. And nowadays. Right. I mean, I, I used to look up the, like, the, the father, like, you know, Padre, you know, at the local church. And every time I see a father, you know, I bow my head, you know, good morning, father. But now, like, you don't see that. That is not a common no. thing. Not in, right. not in our society. I mean, no. I love, like, I love our country. And when I see, like, a new church pop up and it's mostly, like, immigrants, like, uh, Spanish, Guatemalan, dude, I love that because faith brings people together. Yep. And that's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a huge thing. If, if we could, if, if they introduce mushrooms in their community, how much more faith and good will they do? A any community, any right. spiritual group, you introduce something like this, it could change, the, it, 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 it'll better them. The capitalistic approach on it will not better most people without no. the, the, the thought of afterwards. That's just, yeah, I'm with you. That's, that's, that's the big, that's the big challenge with, what we're what we're going into next like the plate cultures and this phenotype and that morphology like that's that's all the fun and the charisma right. and the joy but the changing the world aspect falls down to what we do with it as a society and yep. yeah yeah I, it, I, I love this thing pulling through in that way what we're doing is very similar to like back in the day when nations were fighting one another for supremacy and control and influence and all that stuff and they had blacksmiths that were making the the knives for battle that were making uh you, you know uh crafting guns eventually and all that stuff the the weapons to fight these big ideological wars we are literally like those craftspeople we are creating something that can be used as a powerful tool as a powerful technology, Darren LeBaron, you use this idea of it as a technology. And we are, we are the craftspeople of that, but we could also then play a role in elevating the dialogue around, like you said, integration and, and the afterwards of it all. And if, if we're not talking about that, we are definitely doing our craft a disservice. We're, we're, we're well, missing it. Uh, a fine example is, you get, you know, you work a job, you get paid time off, you accrue two weeks a year after working, God knows how many long after shifts, right? You take a vacation, vacation, you go back to life. The psilocybin is a mental vacation. It is a spiritual break. It is that feeling like sitting in church and crying at a gospel. Like I, I right. when I was a kid, I cried. I don't know why. I don't know how it happened. I didn't force myself to do it. It came upon me. I've ever, I've tripped and laughed hysterically crying. Just, just out of joy, out of, out of the moment. Like there's, there's certain things about it that is so relatable, um, and yeah, it's, it needs to be treated as, as a, 
as a service. You know, it is, yeah. it is, uh, it has, it needs to be as, as a spiritual retreat, I think. The nice spiritual retreat for everyone. You can have it, you can have it and do it, grow it yourself, which is probably better for you to do that yeah. too. The lesson it teaches, the time you spend, the joy you, you get to share with it. It's, 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 it's crazy that no, it's not bigger and more uh, talked about to do. Bro, it, it's like a one night stand versus finally getting to sleep with a woman you've dated for four months. Yeah. It's a, that it's like, like that. that. Like it is that. like that. The, the one with the person, now I'm not saying it always goes great, but definitely there's greater depth. There's greater meaning to having finally gotten to that point of intimacy with somebody you've, you've now built a relationship with for months before you got to that point. Is this going to, and given set and setting, that's also going to influence that, that trip experience. Uh, there's no way it could not. There's just no possible way. If you are the responsible party for the medicine you're ingesting, if you created it, if, if you helped bring it to be, you have a relationship with it. You will automatically, if you, you don't even have to actually have this thought, but you will hold it in greater regard. It will be more sacred to you. It will be more meaningful. Then it's 2 a.m. She's looking drunk. She wants to go home with me. Here we go. There's no way that means the same thing. There's just no way. No, it's, it's synergy. It's, yeah. it's like, like Dennis McKenna. Yeah, it's synergy. It's yeah, it's man. something that it's um, it's the extra yep yeah it's uh yeah. and it can't be created it can't be bought it, it 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 is a unique thing that comes from having that experience uh, of of cultivating it hundred percent all right man uh yeah. so yes let's not go too deep down that rabbit hole because I think that would be a great uh, topic for another podcast for sure. Um, but let's pull up some of your photos. You sent me some cool photos. I think you got some cool stories to go, go along with some of these. All right. So what do we got here? Uh, so this is uh, 2020. Yeah, this 2020. is uh, the rice cooker, Dollar Tree bags, simple polyfill lids, uh, some 20 quart sterilite tubs with looks like tons of different holes. Just trying to figure out what works best for right. what. Um, you know that was. That was getting into it, and that's what that's what you'll get off spending six months of trying this out. A, a year, yeah. a year into it, a, a year and a half into it, that's what you're going to be at. It's 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 a slow thing. Um, you 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 do test it, you run it, and you you with every failure is success, in my opinion. I like that. Well, that's what it looks like when you first really start off. You know, you get you dedicate a rack or a small space, clean, yeah, plastic, and wipe it down, bleach I it. Um, I can tell everybody um, who, who start, you know, you're, you tell them you got to buy the, the press, though. You got to build a still air box or buy a flow hood. You got to, I can tell when somebody's really kind of settled into really doing it when they start talking to me about shelving and storage space. When, when, or or when they show me. There's, there's a key ring duct taped to the top left of it so it stays cracked. There's a key okay. ring taped into it. So it's uh -huh. cracked. So it gets fresh air exchange. I, like I was it. trying everything. Yeah. I, I was I wasn't even fruiting in bags at this time. I was just like, I can't I can fit more small bags of brains in my Instapot than I can jars. So right. I just try to make some more small bags. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, man. So so that's great. This is this is exactly what I want to see when somebody's first getting going is they're they're doing all the things they they've organized a, a a space for it they're keeping it clean um this is all the signs that somebody is likely to start succeeding i have seen photos from people where i'm like bro are you seriously you don't understand why you have contamination look at your fucking space it looks like a disaster there's no possible way <laughs> this is going to work out for you so yeah, man, this have, those are hardwood floors. So if you had a carpet, you would just want to put like a trash bag over that area over the carpet, just so that anything that's living in the carpet, because it's dust mite, any bugs, everything lives in, in everything. It's, it's shit yeah. ev is you know, micro universes on everything. 
we just got to keep it as sterile as technique, sterile as yep. you can, every little bit clean. It'll go a long way. Agree. All right, what do we got here? That is uh, some OG tat on some cat food mixed with lizard food agar. So that's about five grams of cat food, five grams of lizard okay. food. Um, bearded dragon food is what I use. Uh, it comes, it smells terrible when it's sterilizing. It smells even worse when you're pouring it on, you know, 30 different individual plates uh, and it's blowing in your face, cooling down. But it, the mycelium love it. It's they'll eat anything. Um, is ape agar notebooks that have hundreds of recipes. Yeah. Try things that are more accessible to you. Don't go buy the pre-made stuff unless that's if that's what you're guided to do. Then go ahead and your guided is helping you that way. That's fine. But if you don't have that and you're just trying to shoot from the hip, like most of us do at most things, right. try what you have in your house. I have a cat. Um, I bought lizard food because it was on sale at Walmart. It was like three bucks for a, a jar this big. It lasted me a year. I've made I made so many plates with it and made so many transfers. And the only the only thing about the food is that nutrition comes into an issue because there's a lot of different nutrition um, with the cat food and lizard food. But you just you play. You play with it. You trial and error what they like, what things are more compatible with different nutrients. But it's, you won't have to even get into that when you're first starting off. This is just a good example of try what you have. Yep. I like that. Well, I mean, think about how many people are, they're buying the expensive sorghum syrup. They're, they're buying the extra light malt extra, extract from the, oh, yeah. the brewmaster store down the road. But yet every day that they cook grain, they're just, pouring grain water down the drain. I mean, yeah. you, like you said, yeah. I, I like this point of just, it just wants nutrition. I call it, I, I never even say nutrition. I just say it needs a sugar source. There's got to be like some some good juicy bits in there. Where are you going to get that from? There are many different ways to skin that cat for sure. There is, there is. Um, uh, there is. All right, look at these bags. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, these are large, uh, regular large bags with a uh, B filter. Mm -hmm. Um, and the strain, I I got it as a freebie. Uh, it, called, it was called Europa. Um, Europa mm -hmm. is uh, the th a third moon of Neptune or a third moon of Venus or or something like that. But uh, it's a gold cap. It's furious it's super aggressive this is from spore um this is just spore to agar to grains this is nothing i didn't have to work it play with it finagle anything this is just raw wants to grow didn't you know wh whoever had this before i who took the print did a masterful job at what they were doing and just making sure that this thing had the space and the food it needed to grow yeah i like it yeah, and, and here's a great example of what you're talking about. Where in bags, they, they tend to get a little bit more length on them because they're trying to grow up to that that filter patch. And you can see here, all those canopies terminate right about at that filter patch. It's a good example of that. Yep, and you can see that there's no side pinning. Um, and that's just like the setting the bags. The setting the bags is very important. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, yeah. You, you learn that with experience. Yep. Yeah, pack them bags in tight, fill up all the space, and your first flush, you should not get side pins. Yeah. Now, about what kind of cake depth are you working with here? Uh, that's about uh, uh, three and a half to four inches. So okay. approximately uh, three pounds of substrate, a pound and pound to a pound and a half of uh, spawn. Gotcha. Cool. I don't go by volume. I go by pound. Uh, it just makes more sense to me. Volumes always change, but weight kind of kind of stay the right. same if it's very heavy. Things things that build capacity usually are at their weight, not by their volume. It just it, it, it translates in my head. Uh this right here, this is an OG Melmac strain. Um this this is what they had before Thrasher. Uh okay. before the caps bailed out. Um this was I'm pretty sure this one's called M three B two. This came from uh my uh my mentor um, and this was one of the ones that were just like, hey, you don't need to do anything to this. This is my gift to you. Um, just, you know, you'll have medicine. 
Uh, this thing right. goes back to the, I mean, from Homestead before Homestead. Um, yeah, one of the old school, old school uh, Mel Max trains. I like it. Now, this this photo actually highlights one of the few things that I don't like about bags, which is you get a little uh, you get a little cocoa on on some of those fruits. But yeah. now the Melmac yeah. caps are cool. You can you can clean the caps off. It's more of those knurled stipes that get a little bit trickier to to get some of that. Yeah, and that's and that's just because the substrate, how wet the substrate was. Yeah. So the drier the substrate, um, you can even put your arm in there with a paper towel and just wipe it out with you know if you have a glove on, just cleans it right out. This was again right after I got my slow hood, right after my my the men, my mentor kind of laced me up well and was teaching me. So not only did he provide uh, great cultigens for me to to start um, to start going with his mentoring, so it's like he out, he wasn't full of shit basically. So I okay. proved to you I'm not full of shit. Let me take like you're taking your time. Let's let's do this right. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah, that looks great. Yeah, steel magnolia. Looking good. Yeah. Uh, That's. Yeah, this that's one. how you want. I mean, look at all those. You got a bunch of big fruits, even in that little little space in the front there. You got some smaller smaller fruits trying to fill in the gaps. But yeah, that's that's looking nice. Uh, uh this is the PE PE number seven uh, from okay. Inoculate the World. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and they they were huge. The uh, the photo doesn't give it justice. These things were massive. So like the bottom left one uh, mm -hmm. is usually the normal size, about four inches. The one above okay. it is about six inches. The caps were about um, yeah, like a small plate. That one was like a small plate. The, the photo doesn't give it justice. That was a beautiful and as you can see, it grew right up to it couldn't grow anymore. Yeah. Yeah, those look nice. All right, so so what do we got here? Oh, uh, it's odd. Uh, this is PLMC PLMLC point four. Uh, this is one of the original cultures that I got from my mentor. Uh, and boy, oh boy, it's very Melmacky. Um, it has very great characteristics of like the ODPE, also the stretch and length of you know most like. You know, Amazonian golden features, but really, tax the punch, fills the bags, uh, and I mean, I've tried to go back to score with this, and I've never gotten the same look or the same like vigor through through a quick flush. So, I love me some knurled stipe. I uh, the those creamy caps are looking really cool. Um, liking everything about. Yeah, those are uh, one of my favorites. Uh, ah, the Fawn Marbury. This one's the uh, F2, F3. Uh, really pushed out that beautiful Melmac cap. Uh, almost where it, they go the extra long time to mature, but still held that pat body. Uh, this was one of the first crosses I did. Uh, it was like a three-way attempt. Um, and it just, it was all on oats. As at the time, that's the only grain I could get, the cheapest, uh, most accessible grains, besides going to the mill store or a farm feed store in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, uh, these these have done really well in tubs, bins, um, bags, different different climates, different altitudes. When I was all around, pack of punches. I'm, I'm very happy that this one did what it did for my first attempts, one of my first attempts. Definitely filling a bag up. Definitely looks good. Looks like it works. Uh, I'm I'm liking that. Here's another yeah. uh, very white, very pretty mushroom. What what do we got here? Uh, a testament to the Tat Syndicate. Here, this is the OG Tat. Um, nice. obviously it's been worked uh, uh, through thoroughly, and it is just going as hard as it can you can stick the small fruits that you know those are those will mature that size but giving given the ability they will grow 
and stretch, just like that one you see there. And that's what all of the other mutations come from is that that one that's doing way more than the others, showing showing out the apex among the pack. I love that. Yeah, man, those those are very good looking fruits for sure. And yeah, shout out to that OG tat, right? Jick Fibs. That's that's pretty much set the tone and uh a lot, a lot of the stuff we're looking at these days came came from that original tat line. So yeah, shout out to to one of the really important original cultures. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wish I had the the Blue Jay the Blue Jay stores. I've been look, I've been trying to find them. I I don't know if it was a one off small project that didn't didn't reach other things. Life got in the way, but yo, hey, I am so ready for some cool new things that even the new growers and the old school growers who've been around for the last you know five six years ten years that are like hey that's that could be on my radar yeah. that could do what i think it could do for me let's let's play with it well yeah, there yeah. you know there's only more and more people every day yeah, sure. coming into the space and they're playing the game they're they're getting into it so yeah who knows i mean we, this could just be the beginning Yep. All right. Oh. This looks like a great breakfast right here. I love it. Yeah, it's how you pick. That's how you, you pick your uh, pick yourself up in the morning here. There you go. <laughs> you yes. start cutting I, bags these, into pieces. Yeah, these are looking. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's literally that one fruit is like that big around. Yeah. Oh, these these things are insane. I I I miss these things. Um, I like, and forget. You know, you pound that block out, make it nice and flat, even surface, and you just watch it just over time, slowly but surely do its thing. And that's a that's a medium, you know, espresso, extra extra there. That that thing that those those are beasts. Uh, these right. came from um, a friend, uh, Nick Trades. He's re he, he passed away a few years back, um, and you know, RIP his family uh, really. They don't know, but his work lives on. Uh, a lot of people in uh, in the local area might know underground guys might know who he was, what he was like, what he was up to, the work he was doing. But really, really elegant, it, it, awesome, great. takes takes really like we all have a specific thing that we like can do. And hey, these things show enough. Show enough. Oh yeah. I mean, those those are exactly what you want when when you're trying to squat something out. Those those are beasts. They're I think one one for a party of four. I think we get serving tables. A party of four. Yeah. Here you go. Exactly. <laughs> party of four. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I love those things. So cool. So cool. Oh, uh, another one of the fun one-off crosses. Talking about one-off crosses. If they're uh, this one's this. Uh, TP33, what we've just seen, crossed with the uh, blue magnolia rust. Okay. So uh, it was. A, this is like this is F1 from a double swab. Uh, it really shows the BMR really quite well and thoroughly. Not really much of the squatty, thick, flat gold caps. Um, and then you know, but these produced so many scores that I had to take prints and sent them off as giveaways. Bought them around because even if it's the blue mag rust dominant um, and the TP33 might show up, doesn't show up, these these things are as close to, you know, finding in a field in a patch of straw or a patch of manure as I, I could find. Um, my sub recipe is 30% straw. So mm. I'm sure if you made a big spore, you know, two liter out of, out of some prints, you can inoculate a nice path in the spring. Yeah, bad, bad, bad mushrooms right here. Really happy that they came out this way. Yeah, man, sometimes on these crosses, right, you you never know. It's never never know what they're they're going to do from, you know, filial generation to filial generation. Um, you just got to enjoy where they're at each stage and, um, yep, get the spores out there so people can work them. Yeah. Uh, my, a lot of my favorite ones um, have been given to me with for a freebie or, yep. you know, just 
and it's like hey i've seen what you're doing and seen seen like what you're what you got going on i'd like to have other people try this one out um atac is another one that will be showing up soon there'll be a few different isolations and phenotypes of atac um which is a really cool thing um these are the stefan marberries another phenotype of them the frailed caps we've seen earlier the x's in them big full flushes more meaty more taller uh, these uh whether it be cold whether it be a phenotype they showed a lot of difference hmm. potency wise i didn't have them tested um it's just one of those one-off things take a clone back it up take swabs uh, make sure you you know explain the phenotype in short acronyms um, these these are really nice. Um, one of one of the phenotypes I've been tracing for for sure with these. It's just there's so many to go through that when I did when I do have the time, these are the ones that would I would want to make more Melmac dominant from the Stefan Marbury. I would want to chase that cross that way. Keep the keep the tat, uh, you know, the full flush, the same size, but the Melmacs are usually one of those. It rips and tears everything out of all the nutrients, all the moisture, they just want big, big, big mushrooms. I like to tap Man. More, more controlled chaos. Yes. Yeah, I remember the first time I grew uh, some Melmac, and I was like, wow, these suckers are thirsty, man. They just, they will they will use that cake up. Forget about a second flush, yeah. you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's hey, true. if I had a second flush, that's, it's just well, chopped up a paper. You know, it's yeah. that fine. The material, it's that dry. Uh, yeah. The substrate's that dry. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this thing. This is the new uh, one of the newest projects of mine. Uh, uh, this is okay. uh, an albino that popped up from the TP33. Um, uh, it was really, you know, really cold. I, it, I think it was the second flush I tossed in the corner in the hallway. Uh, I turned it around when I was putting it to the compost, I picked it, grabbed some swabs, uh, you know, tried two or three of the different swabs from different sides and, and got two or three different germinations on plates. Took a few transfers. I think I labeled it uh, like albino Melmax squat at first. And then I'm like, no, let's, let's go with the AMTP. And then that, you know, after the three plates turned into one plate, and then that was like, that's the AMTP. And then kept going, took a clone, took another swab, ran it back. And then really, really happy with what it has so far. It's, it's comparable to a lot, like almost like Yeti, where the, you know, Yeti really grows tall and stretches, yeah. uh, and, but really fills the tub. These really fill, but they're, they're meaty, they're squatty. And the second flush stretches to almost to like that Yeti look. But the first flush is always hmm. tough. Uh, meatballs you know like both <laughs> yeah i i love i love littler mushrooms the the when they're you know just the big monsters you gotta cut them up they don't want it, to it, they're not gonna dry whole in unless you just dry them for like three freaking days you gotta cut them yeah, up and it. slice them up yeah i don't like that i i like and then when you're cutting them up you're losing you're losing axes yeah yes, you know you're exactly. you're kind of destroying medicine when you're doing that Yep. It's like the same thing with pot. There's like certain ways you can extract it to get a pure substance. But with mushrooms, it's a delicate, delicate thing. It's not, yeah. it's a science thing to, to extract um, these properties. You know, chocolate bars, candies, gummies, that's, that's, that's easy cake work. But you're talking about extracting, it takes skill, it takes dedication, just like yeah. agar work, just like finding and breeding different fruits and vegetables and mushrooms it takes work takes yep. real takes real work it does it's all work man that's what i tell everybody i'm like you, <laughs> you know that's why these culture vultures gotta go because all they're you know oh. they're not doing no work people oh, yeah. people pay you for your hard work right that's why people are selling grain and sub and they're they're creating new genetics you're paying for the hard work that's what you're paying for Yes, sir. Damn right That's here. It. Speaking of hard work, these look flawless. Yeah, uh, the, these these took about two years, maybe a year and a half um, of just spore cloning, multiple clones, multiple clones, so many clones of the cracker. 
I at, at one point was only growing Nutcracker and Enigma just to find the best thing for my environment. Um, and that's when I was like, all right, I'm done with Melmax. So I'm kind of done with the uh, Golden Teachers, uh, done with the Jedi Mind Fox. I'm kind of just going to find something very, very obscene that has, I mean, it's not the bag appeal, but it's the, I know I'm growing an elegant bush, you know, an, ele- an elegant tree, yeah. an elegant thing. And, and that's what it shows. Uh, and, and props to the substrate creators. The substrate was a uh, full canopy substrates, the guy named Kyle there. Uh, and he does a lot of culture work, but he has a nutcracker that uh, was was given to a friend of mine that I get, that I gave to a friend of mine that he gave to him, and his his one is out of control. Like his thing is, and that's it's so crazy to see that man that work, even a little bit, and even a little bit thing like, hey, yeah, this is this came out really cool. Let me send this to you, and oh, you did you did this, and then you did the work to this, and then you gave it and gave, and that person put some work into it, and it becomes this. Porsche. It becomes this Maserati right. of a of a thing that's hand stitched and woven compared to an assembly line type, you know, thing. And yep. yeah, I, I'm very very pleased with the Nutcracker and that syndicate. I mean, it took it took Dave Wombat just to put a and and Jick to swab these cool looking things and regrow them and say, hey. I don't care what this guy says or that guy says or that person might not do. I'm just going to do what I like. Exactly, man. That's you got to, I mean, whatever your deal is, that's what I tell everybody. And for a while, everybody, I mean, it was like they were following a fad. You, They got to be breeding. And I'm like, you don't have to breed. You can just, you can isolate. You can fall in love with one cultigen, spend some time with it. You don't got to, you got to follow every fad. Just, just do what you're or into. breed with purpose. Yes. Breed with purpose. Uh, if you want to take something that's been overdone and is not really doing well, then double swab it if you have something else growing. Yep. Yeah. Breed with, breed with purpose. If that does better for you and that doesn't, breed with purpose. That's just, you, in, it's like, like six section, six section, six section. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to keep it going. You want healthy yeah. things to go to do healthy things. No. Yeah, man. Yeah, just talking to a guy uh, earlier today. He was talking about wanting to uh, do some breeding work, and I was like, "Well, are you growing mushrooms?" Yeah, okay, cool. Do you? How often do you harvest two different cultigens at the same time, like on the same day? Oh, yeah, I do that. Cool. Just double swab those things, man. Germinate a plate, run the plate, see what happens. That a lot of cool yeah. shits come that way. Just yeah. Yeah. And uh, and don't and don't hesitate and second guess then second guess yourself. You know, and, give it a try. I know a lot of people look at a, a plate and they're like, oh my god, it's that 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 that, and they've seen two or three videos that says you should do this, but oh, then that video says, oh no, you should do this. Man, just do what you think, and then see what happens, and then remember what you did. Yep. Take a picture, put a circle yes. around it. A B C. Label your plates. A B C. T T one T one T one T two T three. P1, yep. P2, P3, go, whatever works, whatever you do for work, work. So translate what you do for your actual job into your hobby. If it's like an EMT, if it's a f- film director, if it's a yep. fast food worker, if it's a, a concrete stamp guy, like you, let's, you can translate shit, do it in inches. We all mm-hmm. do it, uh, we all do it at our own pace, but we all have a, a set measurement in our heads. Do it at that. <clears throat> and it's, it's fun. It's fun. It should be fun. It should be fun. It's, you got to make it fun. This looks, yes. This looks really hard to do. It does. It does yeah. look very hard to do. Yes. But it takes just having fun. Like, I have a full house, full family. Like, people, kids and family, like, people running around all the time. This is this is a part of that. This is yep. what shows through the glass door. There you go. Yes, I love that. All right, we got some more grenades here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is um, combo uncut cross with Miss Batbert. Okay. For its uh, SB10 crossed with Miss Large P, with uh, Miss mm-hmm. Large Peanut, which okay. is the peanut thing is I think Dave Dave's thing, but I've never seen an albino peanut, so I, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. It's one of those cool. crazy names. I uh, almost 
almost unlegible names, <laughs> which is you no know, cool. I like that's when like you that. yeah that's when you know you're really in it is when you start to work something and you go wait a minute what is this who did I get it from what are all these letters mean and then you get you know old school Facebook somebody used to say what does <laughs> APQ mean I don't know yeah yeah hey and that, and uh, yeah we talked about the Europa I was like what the hell is the Europa mm -hmm. who did I get these from like it doesn't say that's not where I got it oh okay it's a freebie. How do I use a score prick? Like, you know, like that's all you have to do if you get a free. Yep. Yeah. And that's really, it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Yep. I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, man. You really, okay. What? What the hell yeah. is this? Yep. Those, uh, those are Phobos. Uh, really, really awesome. Early awesome things happen here. Uh, I always so everything that we've seen is pretty much from score, uh, unless it was like the original, like the OG pad and the OG uh, mm -hmm. Mel Mac, like that was from um, some of my mentor. Props to the OGs for, for always having the banging things. Uh, this is Bobo's from score. I think this was uh, uh, clone score or uh, clone and then score, or score then clone and score. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just, it just took off. I think, yeah, I always do a handful of bags, uh, for each thing that I'm doing, just to get a run and get a feel for it, get it acclimated. Right. And so when yep. I'm doing the substrate and moisture contents, um, and the pH levels of everything, um, and oh my God, I've, I've seen them, but I've never seen them do this before. Again, no. cutting up the bag to get, to, to show these, um, I have swabs of these. I just. I've, uh, you know, backed it up and gone to the next one. I don't think we can reproduce things as good as we've done them. I mean, we always try to reproduce yeah. the things, but it's it's not one of the, it's one of one of those one offs. I I think if you get this to happen again and everyone gets to happen to this, more power to us <laughs> as a yes. as the as cultivators. But this is this is the cream of the crop, Fobo. Uh, I've seen I've seen multiple flushes of different genetics do similar things like this. Mm -hmm. um, and I have seen stuff kind of like this. I don't know if it was ever quite this ridiculous. Yeah, even the one there on the right, you can almost see like um, primordial forming. Yeah, from yeah. ropes. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's that, that's hard as a rock. Um, even the centers there, uh, the bottom right, the uh, the cap that's just you a horseshoe shaped indent mm -hmm. in the caps it's uh yeah um what i put like yeah uh a sticker sticker worthy uh definitely one of those uh, guys let's let's get together and try to reproduce this type of shit it's it's one of those cool things yeah man those are those are memorable for sure right there and that's phobos i don't know what's what's the phobo uh Thing, uh, where is it isolated from? Who originally came out with Bobo? What what is it? In? I don't remember. Um, hold on. A shout out to shout out to Bobo, whoever did that, man. You you shared and and produced some really good hard holy genetics that produced either great mutations one or just genetics that don't care how they fruit. They just want to be big and be bold. <laughs> create a statement for sure and they say somebody says it's albino mars but i don't even know if i know about mars uh, mars would be a, a a tat thing wouldn't it isn't harley quinn and mars right next to each other was it i don't remember which harley i quinn, don't remember I've mars i remember harley quinn but i i never even seen that one dude i, I don't yeah dude me either dave dave where are you? Dave, dave. I bet if I pulled out my stealthy sports deck, I could figure it out, but I'd have to go through about 400 <laughs> cards to figure it out. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've grown photos a few times. I think, I think I got it. Yeah. I don't got it. I don't got it alphabetically ordered. They're just, they're just all mixed up. But yeah, when I grew it, it, it looked way more traditional, way more tat ish. Um, but boy, were they potent. <laughs> oh my mm. God. 
Yeah, there that it's that's a nice one. So you you just found the button, you found how to tickle those things and have them just do something absolutely crazy there. That's that's pretty awesome. No, I'm, um, I, I was a big fan, big big fan of them. Yeah, but you know it's crazy too. Is sometimes you get something cool like that and then you clone it and you grow another tub and you're like, where the hell did that go? It's not doesn't doesn't always take care of you like you think it's gonna. Yep. No, no, and then that's a testament um, uh, a lot to like the T zeros, T ones, finding great growth right off the back and yeah, uh, running everything from that. And then keep running your next weeks, your next two weeks, whatever you have grains available to try the next set of plates. Uh, try everything set. Yep. I would love to set up a type of class or to explain how to actually cultivate. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of guys who explain the cult, you know, plates and monos and crosses and um, issues they're having and new growers, uh, you know, showing their new experience and their new way to grow. It, it's all very, it's super, 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 super helpful. But it, it's taking it step by step is what a lot of these, uh, a lot of people need, especially at times like this where you're jumping from what he says, what she says, what she says, what he says. And if you could just be like, hey, I'm just going to go and do page by page by page, video by video by video. And it's step by step. And it's, it's, why not do that? Why not do this? Keep it simple, stupid, the great method, but it's, it's sometimes it's hard to repeat it um, to everybody. You kind of feel like an asshole. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, it gets it gets old real fast. I mean, I, I for a while I I would see these people going, oh, they're doing their their they're a mushroom consultant, and I would I would kind of poo poo that in my head, like, who do you think you are? You fifty bucks an hour? What are you talking about? And now I'm sitting back going, I get it now. Because I, I, you know, I, some people want three hours of my day and I can't, I don't have it. And then I feel bad, but, but yeah. So somebody's going to have yeah. to get paid because there are people who can just go watch some videos and figure it out. And there are other people who truly need you right there. Step by step, holding, holding their hand, telling them what to do next. Some people can succeed, but only if they have that dynamic going on and that's cool. That's fine. It's all good. Everybody yep. gets and the... it. It, ta- it takes people to spark that. It takes yeah. people who stick yeah. around in the communities to spark that in people. I've watched people start their own businesses and completely navigate in a completely different direction than actives and separate yeah. themselves from anybody with actives, any company, any group. And yeah. it's a lot, a lot of them. I'm um, more than mm-hmm. a handful. I've completely been like, ah, I've been, I'm doing too well to, to do that, to go back right. or to, have that in my life and more power to you. It's your choice. Um, but we're changing the world doing this and every, every house we bring that we bring it to every person that decides to try doing their right to, to express their right, express themselves. That's, that's what we should be appealing to. And, you know, in life, you know, music is the music is a huge inspiration for me. And this is music seeing these grow every day to, to my tempo, to my environment, to what we have going on. This is the music, the, the, the things. Yeah. I'm with you. Yes. It's the, the color, the, the sound, the, everything about it is amazing. Everybody who wants to do this should, should, should be able to do it. And everybody's different. So what works, you know, one guy might be able to listen to, to this YouTuber or that YouTuber or this Patreon person, or they might read a book and have great success. And another person might not, they need, just need a different approach. So thank God there are so many of us doing this and, and trying to get the word out and uh, mentoring and helping and, and, and kind of showing up for new people. I think uh, that is a huge responsibility. Anybody that wants to participate in this community for you, you know a longer duration should absolutely consider helping out and teaching new people as as a, a part of that responsibility of being in the community. You can't just ignore these people like you were that person once. You you didn't know what you were doing yet. You wanted to try. You want to try growing these things. 
It's and, interesting and how, how the dumb question. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, like they don't yeah. know. So how is it dumb? It's not dumb. They just don't know. Yeah. They, exactly. And it, they don't. don't and know. always don't hesitate to to ask because yeah. we all we all have very very limited time to learn a lot of stuff. And man, dude, I don't know why it just popped in my head. It would be like, imagine if LeBron James was sitting on the basketball court and some like eight year old boy walked onto the court. He'd never touched a basketball and he picks a basketball up and he goes to shoot, shoot a, a shot and, and he totally airballs it. Now imagine LeBron James laughing at him, making fun of him. He would never do that. He would never do that. Why on earth would you do that? And yet you see time and time again, some of these people, for some reason, all they want to do is rag on the new people. Of course, you're not knocking it out of the park, park right away. Of course, they don't know what wet bubble looks like. Of, of course, they don't know if it's trichoderma yet. Like, they just don't know. They're new. You didn't know that shit either at one point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Be, oh, be, <laughs> be God. helpful. Yeah. yeah. Just hey, be helpful. And, and pick, pick each other up. Pick each other up. If you're able to read a comment or read read someone's idea or read someone's thought, hit just, just put your two cents in or just say, hey, thank you for sharing. Thank you yep. for sharing. Thank you for spending the time to, to, to think that up. Uh, I see someone, um, Humble Brucey, uh, doing the agar. The agar thing, I love that. I love you know, someone expressing themselves. That's expression of oneself. That's, that is truth, right? So I'm going to put in my two cents. Even though so everyone can like and, con and like and see it and watch it, I'm going to say, hey, man, this is what I got out of that, and I love it. Like, like please, like I want you to do more because I know you want to. You're looking for someone to kick you in the ass, to light the fire with you, to like burn the stick, you know, to draw in the cave with you. Like that's what we right. want. Yeah, like, we want we want those people. If you're just gonna watch me do it, that's silly. I want you to get up and we can put up put up something of your creation, put up your imagination. Uh, yeah. That's that's what we have here. We have creation. That's what we're doing. It's I find it easy now. It was very hard and very, un I didn't, I couldn't understand it for a long time, for days, for months, couldn't understand it. For a year, I couldn't understand it. It took one person to take the time out of their day to help me and yep, to understand. I know it. that story. Pull the curtain, yep. pull the curtain out from, uh, out, out of my eyes. That's, that's what it was. Yep. And then a few, uh, after a month or two of saying, hey, how do you want to do this? Is this something you see yourself doing or? You're just, you know, having fun, playing around. Make the decision. Make the decision because life isn't going to wait. My, your mushrooms aren't going to wait. Um, you know, you you know how it changes lives. If you believe in it, this is what you should do. If you don't believe in it, do do what you choose. It's, right. You know, we have limited time. Yeah. One life to live, man. Yes. All right, yeah. dude. Well, I, I am so glad that we got a chance to do this. This was great. Um, definitely have to have you on again, maybe, uh, talk about, about some integration work. I, I think that would be fun. Um, we haven't done like a round table. Uh, I, I've done individual yeah. episodes. I think it would be nice to bring a few people on and really kind of have a discussion about all that. Um, so yes. I, I think we'll have yeah, and um, a, a mix a mixed discussion too because I I could see how uh, uh, doctors uh, um, people who have have never had a moment to really think of themselves like not think of themselves quote unquote think of themselves but like always putting their other people their smarts their education their wits their fears before their spirit in a sense their you know their their goofiness per se right. Uh, uh, and I love that honest, like unchangeable opinion of 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 of, of science. It's unchangeable. Facts are facts are facts. Um, until they're proven innocent, uh, proven differently, or broken, facts are facts. Um, and to have cultivators and scientists talk. I mean, the one who has no idea about the other one or know what they do per se, and their most, you know, just a general opinion is what we should really talk about. And that's 
network breaks the boundaries of conversation is when we can understand each other simply. We can understand that very simply, we can explore what we know of that understanding and then we expand, expand into each other. And uh, that okay. round table would be sick. That would be sick. All right, we gotta do it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. put it in my notes after, after we get off here, yes. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much for, for doing this. We've talked about it. We finally made it happen. Um, so happy. Uh, I always love having anybody that, that spends any amount of time on my Discord get, getting to come on the show. So thank you for doing it. And uh, hopefully we could do it again soon. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, a quick shout out. Uh, thank you for everyone who supported uh, Geeky and I and everyone who supports each other in all the servers. Uh, and that's uh, it, it. It really speaks on everyone's character. Um, it really does. Uh, thank you to everybody, um, every group. Um, yeah, keep doing your thing. Fucking a right. We're gonna yeah, we're be a part. Be a part of the community. Like yeah. be a community member. Yes. If, keep helping. If someone doesn't really know you, then they really can't judge you. And you know, right. if someone has a bad, bad opinion on you. If you try, if you try to change it instead of waiting for someone else to change it, it'll make your day better. There you so, go. Yep. love, love hey, love, love through and through. Cool, man. All right, great, great words of wisdom, great advice. Hopefully, everybody uh, who needs to hear that one hears it um, from the one and only Stinky Foot guys. If you guys want to connect with Stinky Foot, he's in the Discord. All you gotta do is join my Discord. He's there. He's talking to people every day. Yeah, just come check him out. Going crazy, having fun. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Geeky. Um, cool, man. My yeah, pleasure. Oh, you already know. Cool, man. Yeah. Hey, much love. All right, guys. That was my friend and yours, Stinky Foot. Check that dude out on my Discord. He's there a lot. Uh, a very accessible guy. Very easy to talk to. Um, knows a lot of stuff, has a great perspective. It was really cool to hear um, the value of, you know, finding a community to to be a part of, um, whether that's through Trip Team family, through my Discord, through the hundreds, if not thousands of other Discords you can join. Uh, but the important thing is make sure you're surrounding yourself with people who have the right attitude, take the time to help you out, um, take care of you, protect you give you good advice uh because once you start clicking around those people everything happens uh the way it's supposed to happen so yeah pay attention man it doesn't take too long to figure out what a group's about are they they, they about sitting around talking shit or are they about uh growing mushrooms it's kind of that easy um i i can't tell you how many times i got people on my server going you know what i like about this server full of people that that are not about that bs they are just they're talking about mushrooms answering questions asking questions um so look for that find that where, wherever you want to get that and if you're in a group that you like and it isn't always behaving that way man set the example you know it, it, we gotta have more people in this community who can step up and go hey how the, how the hell are we talking about that what does that got to do with what the the theme of this group i thought this group was about mushrooms right you know what i'm saying Set an example. Anyway, uh, had a great time talking with Stinky Foot. Hope, hopefully everybody learned a little something, something. Some people probably learned a lot. Some people learned a little. Uh, but he's a great guy, and I was so blessed to have him on. So thanks again to Stinky Foot. And until next week, go grow some mushrooms. Yeah.